Well, this will be fun for the next couple hours. Talking bears and bulls. Oh. And whatever else surprises get popped up. Um, as Bulls basketball is fun to watch again. Unbelievably fun. Yeah. And which is a lot of, which is great. Bears football is not fun to watch. Talk about surprises <laughs> popping up. I, I read Brad Biggs today that the chatter around the league, his sources split, but in the last two weeks, momentum gathering uh, that more people are telling Biggsy that uh, Ryan Pace not only sticking around as GM might get promoted. But, I know. But other people saying, no, they're both going, which would be uh, the obvious moves to make. Mm-hmm. So Bears don't usually do obvious. And and they did collaborative last postseason. Yeah. Right? They, they, the two were attached to the hip, uh, the hip to the point where everyone's like, okay, can you tell us if uh, – Nagy's contract runs concurrent with or and they never parallel did. to, yeah. and they wouldn't even get into that, but right. it seemed like they were either going to be successful and improve together or be out the door together. Yeah, and um, so we got a lot of stuff to talk about. We got a, um, we're going to have a poll up, too, um, because I was on a podcast last night, and they were talking about the next head coach of the Bears, and a couple names came up. So we're gonna, I'm going to ask the ESPN 1000 fans. You can go to the Twitter poll at ESPN 1000. We'll have it up there. And it's which former Chicago Bear player would you like to see as the next Bears head coach? Leslie Frazier, Jim Harbaugh, and this one's a tricky one, Sean Payton, because he played during the strike. He was one of the scab Bears yep. playing as a quarterback. Um, so those three, I couldn't think of a fourth one. And I looked at Tyler Rocky. He oh, said, don't, don't, don't he, get him going on, he on said, uh, Harbaugh. He said the one in Ann Arbor. <laughs> well, he said we can't go. He said we can't mention Mike Singletary. I said, no, 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 we won't because no. I won't get any votes. Uh, but I said those three because – I think there's Bear fans that are in, have interest in all three of those. Well, he got you know he was red hot about Jim Harbaugh. That if that comes to fruition, his his fanship is up for for grabs That's and auction. It? Well, here's yeah, the thing. Yeah, that'll be it. Okay. Yep. Well, the Steelers I mean, are the leader in the clubhouse, by the way. Okay. I got news for you. If Ryan Pace stay, sticks around, you ought to be rethinking yeah, the, I know. the entire you know your pride of, of being a Bears fan and your devotion to this because. How would they stand up there, George, or on a Zoom call or whatever, and say, you know, Ted's going to be out in Arlington Heights building the stadium, and uh, by the way, Ryan Pace is going to rebuild the team. Right. I mean, come on. You can't. You can't do it. And I've I've gone as far as said to say that if they're going to keep one of them, I'd rather you keep Nagy because, you know what, keep Nagy and bring in an offensive coordinator who is always going to. we gonna... just go into would you rather? I know. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I would rather have Nagy there and hire an offensive coordinator who is going to do all the offense and have Matt Nagy just... Do everything just, that Nagy was supposed to do. Right, but have Nagy just be a head coach and organize and a rah-rah guy. And, because and they've, it, not quit, they've not no, quit on no, him. They have not. They they've, have not. They're playing hard. They're playing their tails off. I'm not sure if it's for contracts for next year, but it doesn't matter. There's other teams that give up, other teams that don't play hard for their coach, and they all seem to be playing hard for him. They, don't, they all say the right things when they're asked about him. Great head coach, love playing for him, wonderful guy. But you know what? He can't call offensive plays, and he doesn't have any chance idea of an offensive scheme. And then and he can't they, develop a quarterback. And he can't develop a quarterback. And that's why all the things he was hired to do. Exactly. I know. But like I said, if it's be either one, no, I, you I'd what? rather keep Nagy than Pace. Yeah. If death is not an option, yes, yes, <laughs> then I'm with you. Yeah. But look, 44 and 66 under Ryan Pace. All right, one winning season and seven. Oh, and two in the playoffs. I don't tell me about the executive of the year and Matt Nagy's coach of the year. Because the defense had 38 takeaways, whatever it was. Those days are ancient history. Sure. The last four years, Matt Nagy's offense is absolutely bottom barrel throughout. Pick a a category in the offensive category. You'll start at the bottom. You'll find the Bears a lot quicker than the top. You you know, and don't tell me about uh, you know Larry Borum is is a find in the fifth round and some of these other guys, right? God bless you. You, you, you absolutely, you know what, with Mitch Trubisky. Right. Yep. Here's hoping Justin Fields is going to be a hell of a lot better, but I don't think it gets a hell of a lot better under this regime. So no, you, you better either. not damage him anymore. Well, and then you then he goes in, and how could you have not had a plan for if, in fact, Dalton gets hurt, here's the offense we're going to run for Justin Fields. Right. And they didn't have one. No, no. And that's that's just, that's unforgivable. You can't do that. 312-332-3776. Uh, again, this is, I'm doing the Bears postgame tomorrow, but this is basically the last show where I get to talk 
talk about whatever the hell I want sure, to talk about. Right, right. I won't be talking Bulls tomorrow after the uh, Bears beat the Vikings because I think they'll win. I actually – the Vikings well, really – the Vikings are a train wreck too. Right. They yeah. got nothing to play for. Zimmer hates his players apparently. You know. And he's out the door as well. Yeah. I mean, there won't even be a conversation of – there won't be any hand-wringing with ownership there. I mean, yeah. they know what the needs to be done. I think this is their first back-to-back losing season yeah. uh, in Minnesota um, under Zimmer. And so I don't think they're going to wait that long, and, and they'll move him. Um, but – you can always call us and let us know, 312-332-3776, or you can go to the ESPN um, Twitter site, at ESPN1000. Who, which former Bear would you like to see as the next head coach? Leslie Frazier, who's been a great defensive guy over the years. He played with the Bears back in the heyday. Uh, Jim Harbaugh or Sean Payton. Now, people might say, well, why are you just going former Bears? Why are you not thinking Mike Tomlin? I still don't understand why people think Mike Tomlin would even consider leaving right. Pittsburgh. No, I, well, And they would never consider letting him go, I wouldn't think. No, he's going to finish his coaching career there. I Everybody mean, in Pittsburgh stays for their lifetime. Right. You know. Well, Chuck unfortunately, you know, the one thing about Chicago Bears, they give you a lifetime to keep getting it wrong. They do. They do. And the other thing, when, I'm, when you look at Bears head coaches, other than John Fox, they've never brought a guy in that had head coaching experience. Never brought a GM with head coaching no, experience. No, but then you get you get a or situation. With a general manager yeah, yeah. yeah, but then you get a situation. Then okay, well, do you want a college guy? And we've talked about it the last several weeks. Only three college guys have come to the pros and won a Super Bowl, and one of them's Pete Carroll. The other is Barry Switzer, who was gifted a team that Jimmy Johnson left. Right. And um, or do you want to go with a guy that's failed in the past, or like the Bears have always done? Do you want to go with that up and coming guy? And I said, I'm tired of up and coming guys. See, and Sean Payton feels. A couple of holes here. Yes, he does. He, I mean, he. What Ryan Pace was like fourth on the food chain down in New Orleans, right? Right. right. I, I mean, he wasn't even. It's Sean Payton was a Mickey Loomis. I mean, it, yeah, that yeah. sounds right. Yeah, I, I, the the heavy lifting, the big decisions. He might have been here. Fill out the contract, get it to the agent, yeah. you know, and, and we'll have coffee and, and donuts in the in conference room. I, I mean, he really he had wasn't nothing the guy. to do there, right? right. So Sean Payton comes here. He's your foot. You know, when when George said, "Well, well, Ryan and Matt are football guys." Well, Sean Payton's your football guy. Yes, he is. And then if you you're so in love with Ryan Pace, maybe I can stomach him st- sitting around or sticking around because Sean Payton is going to be making the decisions, and Ryan Pace will be back to saying, "Yes, sir, Mister right. Payton." Yeah, and, and we'll see. Three one two three three two three seven seven six. We'll get into some Bulls too because, like you said, it was it was fun to watch. And Tyler Rocky, I had him laughing. He goes, "The last Bulls game you actually have to watch." And Jason Benetti did play by play last night. I see, I know, but you know what? It was it was well worth it because Stacy King was losing his mind on some of the great plays, and uh, it's fun watching. I think they hit Io another and, three. Yeah, they just kept. And then Billy Donovan said, "Well, I want him to shoot more threes." I think we should shoot more because they've shot fewer than anybody in the NBA. Now, granted, they've also uh, – it's probably per game, but they've also played fewer games. I'm looking at the standings. Milwaukee's in third in the East, 26-15. and 15. Now, even my math shows that's 41. The Bulls are 26-10. and 10. They've Correct. played five less games right. than Milwaukee has. So those you know, are games in hand, as right. we say in the yeah, exactly, which yeah. they always say so it's good. It could be good or it could be bad. Right. And the schedule coming up isn't easy for the Bulls. Three of the next four games are against Dallas, Brooklyn, and Golden State. But what's really good about this team is even when they're not good on a particular night, they're yeah. finding ways to win. Yep, they are. Right? Yeah. They're not they're not necessarily good on certain things, but they, now that you have Kobe White, who's playing really mm. well, you have Io, who's playing really well, uh, you're not going to have Caruso for a little bit longer because after all of his other problems, he goes into protocol and things like that. But... Um, they find a way to win each and every each and every game, and they've scored a hundred. Th- if you've been following Bulls basketball, I can't imagine they've scored one hundred and thirty points three of the last six games in any stretch since the Jordan. Pippen they might not era. have done it three in a season. Yeah, and it's amazing, and what they've been doing. The over under last night for, for the Bulls. I was watching the pregame show with Jason Just and Kendall Gill. Yeah. was one hundred eight and a half. Hmm. At the end of three, they had one hundred. Three or one hundred five. I think it was one hundred five. You're at the end your of money. You, you went over. Yeah. Well, yeah, but it was the over was minus three twenty five. Ooh. Yeah. The under was plus two fifty. And I said, ah, nah, no, I'll just sit and watch. Yeah, just enjoy it. And then, and all of a sudden they're throwing threes in from everywhere. So three one two three three two three seven seven six lines are open. Again, I've got today's show. I get the Bears post game, and then I'm going to sit back and listen like everybody else does, and just uh, listen to all the shows. I can't wait for Monday. 
because the station starts at 5 o'clock because they're expecting Local something all day. to happen. And all the yep. guys will be here for, uh, morning, noon, and night because we'll be waiting to see what the smoke from the uh, Vatican up at Hell's Hall looks yeah. like. Yeah, and don't go anywhere at noon. I know if some people may not like listening to Greeny. Well, you won't have to on Monday because it's going to be Jeff Miller and Dion Miller at noon from noon to 2 leading into Waddle and Sylvie. And then, it would uh, be very unbear-like for them to make any announcements Sunday night. Well, and, and Randy told me. He said, listen, just in case something happens, you right. want to hang around the station a little bit after after the post game show, I said that's fine. I don't think they'll do it. They'll at least let Matt get home before they say we're going to let you go, right? They, or make they, any they announcement. They wouldn't want to have him to face the the music at the podium. Yeah, three one two three three two three seven seven six. Before we take a break, let's go downtown and Dean. Dean, you're on ESPN one thousand. What's up? Hey, good morning, Brian. Shout out to Jake for producing and taking my call, Freddie. Uh, before I get to my point, thanks for all the great years, man. I hope you enjoy your retirement and do not be a stranger to the ESPN 1000 family, my guy. Sounds good. Uh, I would go Sean Payton. I had some choice words with Jake about Jim Harbaugh. I think that guy's a joke. Uh, did you know that Brady Hoke had the same winning percentage as him before <laughs> oh, this season? Oh, wow. How damning is that? Like, honest to God. So that's all I have to say about Jim Harbaugh. But the reason I called was to ask you guys a question I heard on Cap and Jay Hood. I think it was on Thursday, and I thought it was a great question because as much as I love college football and college basketball and NFL and, and NBA, they asked if you could have any vote in sports, what it would be, and they both, without hesitation, chose the Baseball Hall of Fame. And I, I would choose the same thing simply because nothing else really – like no one cares about numbers in basketball and football like they do in baseball. It's, it's the thing that has the most uh, cachet, if you ask me. So, you know, Cooperstown history, the numbers, people are obsessed with all that stuff. So that was my choice, and I was calling just to see what you guys thought about that. I'm going to keep listening. Take that, take that. <laughs> Thanks, Dean. We appreciate it. And it, like it is, when we're, when we're playing – we were playing baseball in. I was playing at Goodwin School in the in the uh, lot right across the street from where I grew up in Cicero. We knew seven fourteen. We knew you know uh, Lou Gehrig's um, consecutive game streak of twenty sixteen. We knew those numbers in football. Someone would say, "What's the most anybody's ever rushed for in a game?" I don't know. Well, not about- only that, you just said it when you're playing Sandlot, right? We and how many summers did you know we would play at the p- local park? Even if there were four of us, you know, five of us, call your field. Yep. And then we'd go play pinners. We would play sure. fast pitch. And then at night, you know, flick on the lights on the garage and play wiffle ball till right. you had to go in. Everyone didn't play football. You might no. play flag football, but competitive Maybe, football, right. midgets, whatever. I mean, how many even played high school football? You grew up with some semblance of baseball, even sure. if it was just neighborhood stuff, let alone Pony League or, or you know, VFW, whatever it right. is. You knew 20-game winners. I mean, yeah. when you're growing up, they always they'd always ask a question about 20-game winners, and this could have been sports phone stuff. But the Baltimore Orioles had four 20-game winners one season, right. and you would know who those guys were. But, you know, that doesn't – that's changed a lot now. And uh, NBA is the same way. I understand what Dean said, and I'd probably agree. Well, it, the NBA, first of all, the Basketball Hall of Fame is the Basketball right, Hall of Fame. It's right. not – an NBA Hall of Fame. Right. Everybody gets in. Right. I mean, you, you you get WNBA, you get general managers, right. you get... And it's fine, but it's just... Yeah, college just, coaches, too. Huh? It's all college, too. Like, yeah. yeah. A lot right. of college, active college coaches, right. they're all in the NBA, sure. or and, basketball Hall right. of Fame. And well-deserved. That's in Springfield, Massachusetts, yes. right? Yeah. And uh, 312-332-3776. We'll take a lot of calls. Get your opinion on the Bears. Uh, I know it doesn't matter if they win or not tomorrow, but of course the odds are Justin Fields is going to start. And no. then Justin Fields has COVID. It's like unbelievable. Three one two three three two three seven seven six. Fred and Brian here on ESPN One Thousand. ESPN One Thousand, Chicago's home for sports. The Bears season comes to a close Sunday. What happens next will set the course for our beloved team. And for those of us who love talking Bears, it'll be a Bears Bonanza Monday. ESPN 1000 will be live and local from 5 a.m. until the 7 p.m. kickoff of college football's national championship. That's 14 hours for you to speak your mind with us. Bears Bonanza Monday starts Monday at 5 a.m. on ESPN 1000, 100.3 HD2, and the ESPN Chicago app. 
Have you been lied to? Lied to by politicians or the Wall Street propaganda machine? Hi, this is best-selling author Davey Dowdy from right here in the Chicago area, and I want to give you a free copy of my new book, Crash Proof Wealth. Because according to Time Magazine, Wall Street's retirement plans and 401ks have failed millions of Americans. After seeing the last market crash over 39%, I said enough. I've discovered a way to grow money, potentially double digits, reduce taxes dramatically, and also have my money protected when the next stock market crash hits. When the next market crash hits, you lose nothing. Call Navy Dowdy and Associates now to get a free copy of my book and talk to me personally to discover this little-known strategy to get potential double-digit growth during good years and never lose when the next stock market crash hits. And I'll even cover shipping and handling. No credit card required. Call 1-800-392-9595. 1-800-392-9595. Again, 1-800-392-9595. Life's busy. You're busy. Who has time for waiting around? First Midwest Express Personal Loans can be approved within 24 hours. Apply today and start making plans. Debt consolidation plans, house remodeling plans, even wedding plans. You have plans. We have ideas. Visit firstmidwest.com slash personal loan to apply for an express personal loan today. First Midwest Bank. Momentum for life. Subject to credit approval. Member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Joe Buck and John Smoltz welcoming you back to the City Center Convenience Mart. Heather's moment has arrived, and you just hope all that training pays off. Heather lays down her purchase, but Randy rings it up as slowly as he can. Uh Uh-oh. Yep, she's looking at the cigarettes. There's nothing good back there. Heather's arm is in motion, but she just grabs the gum off the counter. That's a slick move. Even Randy tips his cap to Heather. Stand up to cancer and rally wants you to reduce your risk for cancer. Go to takeahealthystand.org. Get in zone, AutoZone. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today? Ready for an oil change? We can help get the right protection at the right price. Right now, you can get five quarts of Valvoline Daily Protection or Valvoline Max Life High Mileage Motor Oil with an STP oil filter for just $28.99. Visit one of our 6,000 stores or order from AutoZone.com for same-day store pickup or next-day delivery. Get in zone, AutoZone. Restrictions apply. Get help managing your money for the life and years ahead. With Fidelity Income Planning, we'll look at what you've saved, what you'll need, and build a straightforward plan to generate income even when you're not working. A plan that gives you the chance to grow your savings and create cash flow that lasts. Plus, you can start, stop, or adjust your plan at any time without the unnecessary fees. Talk to us today so we can help you go from saving to living. Fidelity Brokerage Services, member NYSE, SIPC. 40 days up to 40 pounds. Say it with me. 40 days up to 40 pounds. With NJ Diet, it only takes 40 days to lose 20 to 40 plus pounds. Since NJ Diet is a contractually guaranteed money back program, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. NJ Diet is 100% tailored to you by using bioenergetically personalized supplements based on your hair, saliva, and blood work. Then, NJ Diet uses DNA testing to create your ideal diet plan and workout regimen to help you keep it off. 40 days up to 40 pounds can be a real thing. Unlike other weight loss systems, NJ Diet is all natural. No shots, no hormones, no prepackaged foods, and no surgery. With offices in Skokie and Oakbrook, or available worldwide with live online video consultations. Start your new journey this new year. Call now, 855-5NJ-DIET, or go to njdiet.com. That's njdiet.com. 40 days up to 40 pounds. 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 40 days up to 40 ESPN 1000, Chicago's home for sports. Follow Chicago's home for sports on Twitter at ESPN 1000. Freddie, it's Carmen and Yurk. Congrats. That's right. On an amazing 40 plus year career in this business. That's incredible. A long way from the halls of Morton East. Listen here, you White Sox loving soccer (laughs) ball kicking, craft beer swilling (laughs) son of a bee. Congratulations. Anybody that can work with Mike North has got to be some sort of saint. Yeah, hey, I work with Mike. So, congr- <laughs> two saints. Wow. <laughs> hey, congratulations on one hell of a run. Starts with Sports Phone and share with ESPN Radio 1000. What a magnificent career. You've done it all, Freddie. Congrats. Right off into the sunset and enjoy retirement. And uh, every time I'm drinking one of those lagers, I'll be thinking of you. All right, don't buddy. forget, pull a Fredo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not 100% sure what Polifredo means. I know, you do. (laughs) 
Speaking of lager. <laughs> yep. I brought you some. Because you, you had asked me a couple of weeks yeah. ago. You said, well, so where are mine? And I said, uh, yeah. I said, I'll bring some in. <laughs> it's his going away party, and he brings a gift for us. We're going we're gonna to open go. these. I don't know what the rules are here, but, you know, we might all be fired. But we're going to, after the show, we're going to open up these. Come we on, got... they were drinking Malort, and they yeah. were drinking uh, whiskeys and stuff like that a couple of weeks ago. No shot. Yeah, all, all, of, the, all of the shows. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure we could open one. It's not a problem. Finding a glass or a cup in this place might be tough. Uh, 312-332-3776. Get your calls, talk some bears. We'll get into uh, bulls throughout. Um, they listed their, their captains for tomorrow's game. Mm-hmm. Eddie Jackson. David Montgomery, Darnell Mooney, that's fine. Roquan Smith, cool. J.P. Holtz, like the fourth tight end. And then I think this is for like the fourth time this year, Christian Jones, the linebacker who is always the team captain, but we never hear his name during the games. I I know when when Roquan was hurt, he stepped up and played, and he's a guy they let go. He went to Detroit, and he came back. And I'm just saying, what? (laughs) And uh, I know Cap was on this, I think, earlier in the week with captains in the NFL. I know in the NHL, you know who the captain is. You know who the assistant captains are because it's on their their jerseys and stuff. But it's so weird that, I don't know, is it a good thing or a bad thing that teams have different captains each and every week? It would have been an insult if he went to Andy Dalton and said, because I I will will hope this is his last game as a Chicago Bear on a one-year, $10 million thanks for coming contract. Um would he not want any attention drawn to the fact that that didn't really work out? You know, at the beginning of the season, he said he knew why he was put right. on this planet. And, you know, God's plan was for him to be a great quarterback. Well, yeah. he's made money. He has. He, he's a he nice played, guy. He a nice he's a wonderful since, guy. Yeah, yeah. And he's a good team guy and all that. But Red Rifle years well behind him and, and right. it didn't work out here. But but wouldn't it make more sense? I mean, it might be. I, I it, It's the last game in the or NFL. Maybe, yeah. I mean, or is he going to? Someone else going to need. It won't be ten million. It might be back to the one and a half or two million that Dallas Cowboys paid him last year. Right, and you know what? So he got he gets his nice uh, chunk of money from the Bears. That's fine, but it's just so weird that it's that it's him, um, Christian Jones. And again, a fine young player, and uh, maybe not so young anymore. And the other thing is really quickly, <clears throat> Akeem Hicks out uh, tomorrow, and I think it was Dan Weeder. I saw that Akeem Hicks has missed twenty games in the last four years. I think mm-hmm. with the Bears, yeah. Here's a guy that earlier in the year wanted a new contract, and they're, knew you know, it wasn't coming. Yeah, and and um, I just posted the other day. I said, yeah, and this is the guy that wanted a new deal, and I just put muffin top, which was which was Mongo's way of talking about Akeem Hicks, and a lot of the Bears fans got upset because they said Akeem Hicks is really a good player. He's a, yeah, he's a fine player, but what 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 do they say? One of the best abilities is availability. That's it, and he's not been available for enough time for me to consider him a great Chicago he's, Bear. he's on the wrong side of 30. Yeah, 32 and look, now. I mean, it was a great story. He defied the odds to get to the league. Yep. Uh, he certainly made an impact initially here in Chicago. He's yeah. a great, you know, you wanted to watch him play. He was an easy guy to root for. But, yeah, it's, it, since he knew that the future wasn't here, yeah. You know, he hasn't been around all that much. No, you got to stay on the you got to stay on the field. I mean, and, and I know it's not easy. It's the National Football League. People get hurt and banged up each and every single play. I mean, how many times are you watching a game where they're carrying another guy off? Oh. This year, they've seen the cart a lot of people off, not seriously hurt, as it turned out. But you know, the precautions have been so so much. And uh, but yeah, I like the game Hicks when he's playing. It, it's hard when you you look at it, and same with Eddie Goldman. Eddie Goldman got a lot nice deal. He's still a, a guy that's questionable for tomorrow. Um, Duke Shelley, another guy that's questionable for tomorrow. But we know that Akeem Hicks is not going to play, and that's that's you know, it's a game I have to watch uh, because I'm doing the post game. And uh, uh, you know, there'll be a lot of Bears fans who won't watch the game, but they'll watch the post game, thinking, well, maybe sure. maybe there'll be some news. And even if the Bears don't officially say it, it, it you know, Adam uh, Schefter or someone right. might break something yeah. because you know people talk yeah i do think they'll let him come home uh before they say anything to him or, or the, if they told him already and naggy has been very good naggy said earlier this week he said listen i've not been told that this is my last and game. i believe him yeah so I do really i do. so do i and, and he said he goes if if you want to know ask I'm a great me, source he's he goes, a great yeah, source, a great yeah, source. Yeah. i'll be honest uh let's go to uh jim down in mokina jim what's going on good morning guys how are you doing well Freddy, just wanted to say thank you for all your years um First time I ever met you and saw you, you were on the old decrepit payphone at the end of the press box at the old stadium. <laughs> yep. Amongst amongst the gentlemen like 
Red Mutlow and uh-huh, Gleason boy. and Ziggy Bobin and Don Murphy was the PR director. Oh, so God. You've come a long way, buddy. Yep. And you've never been uh, a different person. I love a guy that has been nice to me all these years and yet can also be crusty and cranky and give out his opinion, and I love it. So good luck in all your future, and I'll be out there publicizing your beer for you. Sounds great, Jim. Thank you very much. Take care. I, I used to love the old press box at the at the stadium. Oh, the, it, no, the, the one behind, like, for yeah. hockey, behind the net. Yes, because so, <laughs> you had to have your head on the oh, swivel. Are you kidding me? Slap shots. Or, for you, the pregame. You, uh, you're just walking in. Yeah, and, and there was a, a metal sheet sheet metal on the back and the, the dents from all the slap shots and yes. you would just have your head down typing or looking at something and you were bam and it just whizzed by yeah. you you were lo- so lucky it was awesome yeah i it mean was, it was a, it was a great I, I sat with sylvie up there when sylvie was just breaking into the business and i used to love and like you said red motlow there was nothing better than red motlow who did radio here in chicago where there were three and a half minutes to go in a game it's five to one five to two and a fight breaks out he'd, he'd throw it damn it Come on, get this damn game off. He started yelling, and we we would try not You're to laugh. You're talking about Krusty, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. we would try not to laugh, but he would be so aggravated. Come yeah. on, get this game going. He's doing radio the next morning, and it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> but those are some of the things that, oh. I mean, people say that, you know, all the things I've done is like, man, oh, man, sitting up in that in that press box. Um, and the Blackhawk guys were always wonderful, Whoever, no matter who was doing it, no matter who was up in the press box. And uh, Jerome Holtzman sat next to me when I was doing the Cubs, and he would sit there and talk to everyone in the world on the phone. Uh huh. He, would, I mean, one time he was talking to his barber for a half hour. I mean, how, what? If, that's what you do when you're in the chair. Yes. You don't talk to. And then he would always he would hang up after his like tenth phone call. Like, can you give me a fill on his scorecard? He needed like six innings. Yeah. It wasn't like I missed a couple plays. No. No, they had the press boxes at the old places, they had, at Comiskey Park, sitting up in the top row because I was sports phone for a oh, while, yeah, and, yeah. and it was great. We had you know, Bob Greenberg's in the back row, and I'm in the back row, and Jerry Cook, who passed away, um, you know, late or in the middle of last year. It's a, we had so many great conversations and talks and stuff oh, like that. If Just people knew stuff. how much fun you had in the press box, oh yeah, it's it, I mean you got paid for it more, yes. more than fifteen dollars an hour. Yep, uh, <laughs> just only, a little bit. I mean it just. <laughs> Lindsay Will Hyde, who's been the great PR guy out with the Wolves, you know, down in Champaign, they would always, you know, at the beginning of the game, they would tell you changes or to the roster or whatever. Yeah. And they always say, you know, please make a note of it. Well, we ended up, please make a joke of it. Because <laughs> all we did, John Greenberg and I sat there in Northwestern football games yeah. and just, I mean, cracking each other up the entire time. Sure. So many great, yeah. great, uh, and Jerry Boers, some, and yeah. I, I mean, we just, we we're before, before sports talk radio, we were doing right. two hours up there. Yeah. To the point where we got shushed by a lot of the more serious uh, <laughs> sports writers. Yeah, I know. There were a lot of those serious guys. Yeah. Callers hanging there. I swear to God, we come back. We'll get right back to you. A bunch of guys jumping out of the line. We'll talk some bears. We'll get into some bulls a little bit later on. We're here till 1 o'clock on ESPN 1000. ESPN 1000. Chicago's home for sports. Dear Winter, we're not scared of you because almost nothing can stand in the way of a new 2022 Toyota. When you say, stay home under a blanket, the Camry all-wheel drive comes out to play. The Corolla is hotter than ever, with tons of tech to keep you plugged in to your favorite apps, music, and more. Snowy hills don't stand a chance against the RAV4's available all-wheel drive with multi-terrain select. And with over 200 horses under the hood, the RAV4 weathers the toughest storms. Grab the family, hop in the Highlander, and go build some snowmen. Everyone will be comfy with available heated front seats and cushy seating for up to eight. With 16 models featuring available all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, Toyota will get you everywhere you need to be this season. See you in the snow. Toyota. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. Did you know Edison Park, one of the great Chicago neighborhoods, now has another exciting new destination. It's called Tavern on the Point, and right now is a great time to experience their rooftop. Yeah, I said rooftop. The area's first all-weather covered in heated rooftop space. It's brilliant. Tavern on the Point is hosting live music, exciting events, and how about you just get together with some special friends for dinner and drinks. Plus, don't forget, they offer catering as well. Go to tavernonthepoint.com and check it all out. From weekly specials to classic cocktails, enjoyed in a space with a stylish, modern design, Tavern on the Point's in Edison Park. 
Start the new year off right with Menards Bag Sale. Pick up a bag in store and get 15% off everything you can fit in the bag now through January 15th. Whether you pack it, load it, stuff it, or stack it. From light bulbs to tools, snacks, and much more. Fit it in the bag and save 15%. So pick up a bag in store and find out how much you fit in the bag now through January 15th. Available in store only at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Get help managing your money for the life and years ahead. With Fidelity Income Planning, we'll look at what you've saved, what you'll need, and build a straightforward plan to generate income even when you're not working. A plan that gives you the chance to grow your savings and create cash flow that lasts. Plus, you can start, stop, or adjust your plan at any time without the unnecessary fees. Talk to us today so we can help you go from saving to living. Fidelity Brokerage Services, number NYSC, SIPC. Cutting the price of your wireless bill feels good, really good. Actually, it feels great. You should try it out. So cut your bill by switching to Straight Talk Wireless. Now offering our $45 Silver Unlimited plan with 5 gigabytes of hotspot and nationwide 5G on America's largest, most dependable networks. The $45 Silver Unlimited plan from Straight Talk. Straight Talk. Wireless. No contract, no compromise. A month equals 30 days. See terms and conditions at straighttalk.com. 5G capable device required. Actual availability, coverage, and speed may vary. Speed. We're all obsessed with it, especially when it comes to our internet. Luckily, Xfinity delivers gig speed to more homes than anyone. And not only that, our gig is faster than AT&T's. And with gig speed over Wi-Fi, that means faster speeds all over the house for streaming, oh my God. for gaming, whatever you need speed for, you'll get more. Plus, Xfinity now has speed options up to three gigs. That's three times faster than AT&T. Now that is fast. You're obsessed with speed. Good thing Xfinity is too. Can your internet do that? Learn about gig Wi-Fi or get started with Xfinity Internet for $20 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, ask about speed three times faster than AT&T. Go online, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay with a stored bank account. Ends one twenty three twenty two. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet, 50 megabits per second Internet customers only. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Gig speed Wi-Fi requires gigabit Internet and compatible X-Fi gateway. Actual speeds vary and not guaranteed. Three gig service requires customized installation. Follow Chicago's Home for Sports on Facebook at ESPN Chicago. This is ESPN 1000. Oh, Freddie Hubner, it's your friend Pappy, Mike North. I'll tell you what, anytime I needed something, anytime I needed somebody to show up, anytime they needed somebody to fill in, or when we worked together on a regular basis, I always knew you were going to give 100%. You're a pro's pro. Uh, we were friends with you, uh, me and BB, along with your late white Pat, and uh, we've been friends from the beginning. I remember you walking into uh, the score in 1992 with that puke yellow San Francisco 49er jacket. I said, who the heck is this guy? <laughs> and uh, boy, did I find out. We had some great times together. I know in this business, people always say, hey, we're going we're gonna to keep in touch. Well, you know, we've always kept in touch. You know, I throw compliments around like sewer covers. You know that. It doesn't happen often. <laughs> But I'll tell you this, you're the man, you're a pro's pro, enjoy your life, and talk to you soon. Oh. You still have that jacket? I remember uh, too. Yeah, I, I, I can't remember if I, if I have it or if I gave it to my um, nephew, who's, uh, who Boy, I turned into a Niners fan. Oh. Yeah, he turned into a Niners fan. Hey, listen, there were stretches where the Niners were absolutely putrid. Right. Um, so was that coat. Yeah, it was, jacket. yeah, it was, you know. It was the official one. It was like the. It was kind of more gold. Right. And it was a nice one, but I've got like six Niners jackets at home. I'm I'm trying to clear out my closet. I go. I can only get rid of some of these, so I'm keeping some of the nicer ones. But they had some really warm jackets. I don't know. Well, it's practical it then. Yeah, yeah, it is practical. Uh, today I got my Niners shirt on because I still I'm still hoping they can make the playoffs. Uh, they got a game with the Rams, and we're going to talk about that too because the NFL screwed up, and I understand it's all about money. That's why they split. Two games Saturday, mm-hmm. the rest of the game Sunday, and then Sunday night. No Monday night game because of the playoffs. I understand that. But soccer's done this forever, and baseball started doing it the last game of the season. At the same time. Everybody should start at the same time. Now, I know Fox and CBS and ESPN and ABC would be screaming, but you should not have a situation where one team can, like, if the uh, Colts lose, then the Raiders and Chargers tomorrow night. If they can, tie, they both get they in. They both get in. 
So they could just say, let's run let's into the score. line. Yeah, right. Just, let's run into the line yeah. on every possession. We're, we're, you're good. We're good. We right. both want to be in there. Yeah, they both get in. That should never happen. And, you know, I I know that I'm bitching and moaning about it, but I got to bitch and moan about something What's before I get Fred's out of here. What's up, Fred's can? First segment. <laughs> yeah, before I get out of here. What's up, Fred's can? I, I got to bitch about something, and the NFL's doing it wrong. And they should have everybody playing at the exact same time. Uh, and like I said, if baseball decided to do it, and baseball's got stuff, people all over the place, same as football, they still all yeah, play. But see, you play West Coast, it would play, it would be a 12-30 game West Coast, 2-30 here, 3-30 in New York. Yeah, but the broadcast partners wouldn't go for it. I know. You know, Terry Bradshaw in his winter coat and his hat. Oh, God. And what, what the hell's yeah, going on there? That was last week's What's Up, Fred's Can. Let's go to Old Town. And, George, you're on ESPN with Dallas. Hey, George. Snow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Freddie, thank you for the versatile 40 years. You're the Frank Thomas or Ben Zobrist of broadcast radio. Thanks so much for the for the great years. You're, you're as versatile as they come. Thanks. And it's always been a pleasure. We're going to miss you on the radio, my friend. Thank you very much. I, I always decide there's two groups of people. You're either one of the stars and you have a regular shift or you're a, uh, a utility guy where you can cut up sound, you can cut tape, you can answer phones, you can do all that stuff. And back when Ron Gleason, I tried to apply at the score, he said, I don't have any openings on air. I said, that's fine. What do you got? He goes, backup producer, cutting up tape, splicing stuff together, answering. And then you became a star. Yeah, well, I said, that's fine. I said, I'd rather be here than one of 300 resumes on your desk when a job See, opens up. See, there you up. go. And he said, fine, that's great. Come on in. So I kept a full-time job and worked there, you know, on weekends. So it's been 44 years of working weekends for me. So well, next no, weekend will be the no, first then, time. Then you were one of the primetime players for a long, long time. But North used to get mad at me because I would always work Sundays because I love working the NFL shows. Right. Either pregame or postgame with guys like Dave Dorison, Steve Silverman. He's like save your A material Joe for Monday through Friday with, with Mike. He did. Right? He yelled at me numerous times for that. Yeah. Well. So what the hell are you working on Sundays for? I said, well, it's my show. He goes, you talk all five, five days a week. I said, oh, well, you, you know, wanna, a little can extra you, money. Can you read some hip-hop lyrics for me today? Uh, I got some of those. I don't know if I can. Uh, George, any Bears thoughts? Yeah, yeah, you don't, yeah. yeah I've got some Bears thoughts. <laughs> I mean, I, I heard the rumor that Harbaugh is probably going to Las Vegas, so I, I want Sean Payton and that, I think, that assistant GM. Then the, you, don't, you don't have to worry about the GM because he's supposed to be one of the best. He's brought a lot of the – great talent to the uh, uh, NFL and they you know they've worked together before that would be ideal to me if they you know what they've done a great job down there and we appreciate the, all the thoughts George uh, they've done a great job in New Orleans for a long time yeah, yeah. And, and look and that and if you want to keep Ryan Pace around and pay him fine if, now if you're Ryan Pace and you're <laughs> So you're not only Sean Payton showing up, but he's bringing a right hand man, and so now right. you're back to being third or fourth on the food chain. Yeah, you're not getting another GM's job anywhere in, the, no. in this league. So you might just be happy to take the McCaskies money. Sure, and and they love you, and you love them, and and just you know make it as long as you can make it. If he's endeared himself to them so much, and they love him, but but that's fine. in your heart of hearts, you know that you've just been absolutely the league's right. taken out from underneath you. But if you want to sit there as an empty soup, knock yourself out. Let's go to our guy, Bear fan Bob. What's up, Bob? Hey, how are you? You know, Fred, you kind of stole a little bit of my thunder because I was going to take you back to the days when I used to visit you out at Soldier, around Soldier Field with uh, Dave Dewerson and Mark Silverman. That was really nice, the pregame shows that you guys used to do, and I enjoyed those a lot. And I know I'm going to miss you a lot on the air, but we're still going to get you on the podcast, and it's still going to be fun. Yep, thank Anyways, you very much. You know, and I hope, Brian, I, <clears throat> I, you know, maybe you and I will talk some football later on. Absolutely. That happens. Absolutely. You know, I'm looking forward to it. So, you know, we've been together, all of us, a long time, and I hope it stays that way. <clears throat> so, moving on to the Bears. I hope this is Coach Nagy's. I hope he has a nice day tomorrow. I hope he has three hours of enjoyment. I hope the team is disciplined. I hope they don't make any mistakes. You know, play a good game. I hope Coach Nagy calls some good plays out there. You know, and let's give us some semblance of a professional football team like Run the ball on the outside, throw the ball to the outside a little bit, run the ball on a slant up the gut a little bit, and make them work and make them timed plays. So, you know, Bears fans do have some kind of hope that maybe the coaching staff can do some things. I don't know. I don't think they can. Anyways, I'm, I am going to watch the game. I do want Coach Nagy to have, have a great day. Yeah, send him off My as a winner. He's, he, he, you know, he's absolutely. an easy guy to like, right? You know, this guy has class. And as Bears fans, we need to have class, too. And it needs to stay that way. Why would we ever want to wish a, Bear, a Bears coach bad? I don't want to ever see that. You know, if he's going to be released, fine. But do it in a classy manner. 
and if we're to get a new coach, I would hope that somebody might take a look at Doug Peterson. You know, this is a hmm. guy who uh, did win a Super Bowl, you know, with a guy by the name of Nick Foles. You know, might be oh. worth looking at. Are we going to keep Nick Foles around then, too? <laughs> you yeah. know, as, as a backup, he's not a bad backup, no. Brian. Yeah, no, a couple weeks ago. You know, right, you put, yeah. an offensive li- put an offensive line around him, and you might find he's pretty good. You put an offensive line around him in Philadelphia, they won a Super Bowl. Imagine he won, a, he won a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah right. Yep. You know, with uh, Peterson. So maybe my thoughts aren't all that bad. I don't know, but no, I never. could be wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Freddie, I wanted to wish you a great send off and have a great day. Brian, we'll talk to you down the road. All right, Bob. Care, Thanks, boy. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, Doug Peterson was in camp this year for, you know, at, at the Bears facility helping out because he knows Nagy so well. Sure. It, it would be kind of a bite in the butt for Nagy if Nagy was let go and he brought in Doug Peterson. <laughs> yeah, here's how the offense is supposed to run. Yeah. By the way, uh, uh, Bear fan Bob mentioned your uh, podcast. Yeah. And Monday you have a special. Uh... Yep. I'm going to have Mike North and Mike Murphy on uh, my podcast. You can find it on my Facebook and I'll promote it on my Twitter and things like that and on YouTube and Twitch and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Well, These Red are guys Mott I work with. Us. No, he will not. With us? He, he will not. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I worked with – I worked mornings with uh, North for four years and I worked with uh, Murph for like five years and then I also worked with Murph when they first started – when the station first went 24 hours. Yeah. When uh, we were working at 1160, and I remember we went out, we had a remote, and I think things went bad, and we had to hurry back to the station. Ah. And, uh, yeah, those are the way things happened that back happened in the day. That happened to me in Grant Park. Uh-huh. It was taste of Chicago, whatever. Uh. Here comes a storm, the rain coming sideways. Yeah. We're in like a little, like a tree house but without the tree. Sure. And next thing you know, power's out. We, we're hightailing it back to Belmont, which yeah. is not an no. easy commute no, on a Saturday not. or whatever it was. Try it's to not get back close there. at all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing still that we'd walk into a little a little place, look like a bunker that you want to hide out for in a, in a bombing. I think we all got radioactive uh, yeah. stuff from Sitting the, next the day, antennas yeah. right, like, right next <laughs> right to Right next you. to us, yeah. I know. Uh, we go to Joliet and Dwayne. You're on ESPN 1000. Hey, Dwayne. Hey, how's, how's it going, Fred and Brian? Going well. What's going on? All right. Hey, Fred, look, man, um, I've been listening to you guys like forever, man. Uh, I'm right around your age, Fred, and I just had to call, man, because you and your wife had touched my heart, man, back in 2003. When you was down the Dow, 2003, you got, they, they used to always go out uh, to Vegas every year to do a thing, yep. uh, Buffon and, and North and them. You remember? Yep, I do. Okay, 2003, Fred, remember me and my fiance got married while we was there in 2003. You <laughs> might remember me now. Okay. But it was a, it was a long time ago, but ever since then, I uh, even before then I was a huge fan and I'm still a fan. I wanted to call and tell you I wish you nothing but the best, man. You are so professional. You is you is awesome. You deserve to be celebrated. And I just wanted to let you know that me and my wife, we love you. We love your your, your wife that passed. We love you, and we keep you in our prayers. Hmm. And I just want you to have a great, great retirement. Dwayne, I really appreciate it. And, and, you know, that was one of the things I loved doing. I loved when I was out and people would either recognize me or know who I was and wanted to talk sports. And sometimes people would say, you know, I know you probably do this all the time. Listen, if I didn't want to talk to the fans, I would never go out. I mean, I love when people would come up and want to talk and talk about something we did on the radio. And uh, being in Vegas, that was fun because, uh, you know, being in Vegas back then was nothing but fun. My wife and I had a great, great time out there uh, in 2003. I'm glad you guys are still together. Yeah, there, I was going to say, yeah. what are the odds of a Vegas marriage happen? <laughs> still together all these years, boy. Hey, man, we've been together now over 40 years. That's we've great. Been together That's over great. 40 years. God bless. Yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to tell you, man. Thank you for being so kind and, and, and listening to me babble on. I know I was probably babbling, but you is the best, Fred, and uh, God bless, man. Thank you, Dwayne. I really appreciate all the kind words. That's very, very nice. Uh, very nice. I, I, um, I love Vegas, and I went last year, and you all heard the story about me. The first night I was there, slipped and tore, pulled a hamstring well, just muscle. Just getting there. Yeah. You had car trouble? <laughs> My, well, yeah, I got on the expressway, and the guy sideswiped me and kept yeah. going. 
And uh, I said, this is probably not a good sign. And then on the very first night in Vegas, they had, someone had spilled a drink like moments Never before I walked. Never Vegas, no. Yeah, oh. and uh, the floors are all marble, so they're a little slick anyway. Yeah. I, my foot went out from under me. I pulled a hamstring and smashed my knee in. And uh, the hotel wasn't going to give me anything. I said, well, okay, if you're not going to, I'm not going to go because it was in the middle of COVID. And I said, I'm not going to go sit in the hospital for f- six hours because of a pulled hamstring and a bad knee. So I limped around for the next three days and realized that 36 seconds to get across Las Vegas Boulevard is just barely enough. <laughs> when, when you got a pulled hamstring, there was a guy in a walker who passed me up as he's walking across the street. I said, this is not good. This is not good. And I was by myself. And one of the biggest problems after you pull your hamstring and bang your knee, up is taking your pants off oh and you know you, you had to do that eventually to get to bed to get out of bed to do other thing i, I see it's the last trip I'm you, you were in this. more pain than the guy who gets twenty dollars for him kick him in the privates oh yeah you there's know, no they, doubt he holds a sign that says kick me you know we're yeah. south of the border for 20 bucks or whatever it might have yeah. gone up i was in a ton of pain yeah but like bachelorette parties would all take advantage here's you know here's 520s yeah. we're all going to get a kick to the gronal yeah well i went uh, thank goodness i wasn't quite it didn't hurt that i wasn't doubled over i was just limping <laughs> callers hanging there we'll get right back to you here on espn 1000 jason how's your off season going it's great. It's great, guys. This is my first time on the new uh, flagship home of the White Sox, which is awesome. I just have to say, I hope this new partnership doesn't mean Fred Hubner can't hate me anymore. Oh, because yeah. his subtweets make my day, and I want him to still be able to hate me. ESPN 1000, Chicago's home for sports. College football bowl season reaches its climax. Monday, be here for the College Football Playoff National Championship presented by AT&T. The Crimson Tide of Alabama takes on the Georgia Bulldogs. Coverage begins at 7 on ESPN 1000, the ESPN Chicago app, and 100.3 HD2. College Football Bowl season on ESPN 1000. Brought to you by First Midwest Bank, Bettenhausen Automotive, and i.lifeordeathillinois.com. If you have unfiled taxes or are in debt to the IRS, this is important news. The IRS just rolled out a new program to help struggling taxpayers more easily resolve their tax problems. It's called the Taxpayer Relief Initiative, and it opens up powerful new options for people looking to get back on the right track with the IRS. And no one knows this program like the professionals at Optima Tax Relief, America's most trusted tax resolution company. They've resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients and have the expertise and experience to help you. One easy call to Optima can start the process, helping to put an end to your worries of wage garnishment, asset seizure, and other aggressive IRS actions. Make today the beginning of your fresh start with the IRS. Call the experts at Optima Tax Relief now for your free confidential consultation. Call 800-715-5499. 800-715-5499. 800-715-5499. Optima Tax Relief. Some apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Ad sponsored by Open Jar Concepts. Attention, this is an important message for anyone that has been diagnosed with cancer after being exposed to Roundup or other weed killers. The Internal Agency for Research on Cancer warned that overexposure to Roundup and other weed killers may increase the risk of developing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Monsanto, the manufacturer of Roundup, may have known that Roundup and other weed killers were likely linked to organ damage and cancer. This information was hidden from the public as proprietary trade secret since 1981, and Monsanto may have failed to warn of the potential risk of cancer. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer after being exposed to Roundup or other weed killers, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Call us now at 800-951-8628. Our network of attorneys are ready to fight for you. You'll pay nothing unless there's a recovery in your favor. Call now for a free consultation at 800-951-8628. You must protect your legal rights. Call 800-951-8628. Again, 800-951-8628. Dear Winter, we're not scared of you because almost nothing can stand in the way of a new 2022 Toyota. When you say, stay home under a blanket, the Camry all-wheel drive comes out to play. The Corolla is hotter than ever with tons of tech to keep you plugged into your favorite apps, music, and more. Snowy hills don't stand a chance against the RAV4's available all-wheel drive with multi-terrain select. And with over 200 horses under the hood, the RAV4 weathers the toughest storms. Grab the family, hop in the Highlander, and go build some snowmen. Everyone will be comfy 
with available heated front seats and cushy seating for up to eight. With 16 models featuring available all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, Toyota will get you everywhere you need to be this season. See you in the snow. Toyota. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. Follow Chicago's home for sports on Instagram at ESPN underscore Chicago. This is ESPN 1000. Hey, Fred, it's Ron Gleason. Congratulations on joining the Great Resignation Group of 2022. Or retirement, if that's what you want to call it. I know you will enjoy it, however. Boy, we go way back. I can remember sports phone days back to the late 70s. You ran the place for a while. And then we got together at the score. You did updates and eventually teamed up with Mike Murphy and the two of you made magic together. Remember scores on the fours? And then, of course, competing against you. Bears before every game. You and McMichael, me and our crew down the dial. Anyway, congratulations. I hope you get to go someplace warm to enjoy retirement or stay cold. It's really your choice. That's the cool thing about retirement. I can't relate. I don't know. I can't afford it yet, but hopefully someday I can grow up and be more like you. Congratulations, Fred. All the best. Oh, my God. Hey, Brian. Ron Gleason sounds the same no matter what he says. It's unbelievable. All these years later. I know. And you see the news guy went right to the news. Yeah. The great resignation of, of 2022. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, you know, people leaving the workforce. Yeah. Uh, Pat Cassidy just retired. And um, he'd been on, heck, he'd been all over the place. He was on, the first radio, the first sports update I ever did on radio uh, was on WMAQ in 1988 in January. Because they were switching over to all news in uh, Janu- in March. So in January, they needed someone to do their sports talk show. Mm-hmm. Well, on Martin Luther King Day, all their other regular people took the day off. So they said, can you come in and do updates? So I said, okay, that's fine. So I'm there at 520 or whatever in the morning. Pat Cassidy's getting ready to do his stuff. And I go, how do I do this? He goes, try this, press this, press that. I got to go. I got to do my show. And I... You know, fumbled through the first day doing updates, and I did the sports talk show on uh, Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, but yeah, and Pat retired. He was a great guy. Great guy. I used to yeah. ride the elevator with him at the other place because yeah. we were starting at the same time in yeah. the morning. And yeah, uh, yeah he's real terrific. nice guy. Yeah. yeah. So he's he's getting out of the business, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's it's fun. I'm looking forward to retirement, and I'm not. I'm moving. But I don't know that the weather is different in Lockport than it is in Downers. So people keep saying, aren't you going to go somewhere warm? I hate sweating. I don't like sweating at all. Um, and then people say, well, but you like Arizona. I never, heat. I never believed it until I went there. And it is a dry heat. Right. Unless you're ex- exerting no. yourself, you, you go, won't sweat. You go, go down to Fort Lauderdale in July. Oh, no. and, and stand in the shade, no. and within five minutes, you, yeah. you need to change your shirt. Yeah, that, that, that that's a wet heat. That, I have that's... friends in Florida, and I'm I don't I only go like now, yeah. you know, until February. But yeah. you other the, the other snowbirds, yeah, yeah, yeah. Forget that. Let's go to Rosemont, Bob. Bob, what's going on today? Good morning, guys. Uh, Fred, I wanted to uh, uh, congratulate you on all the years, both here and down the dial, and and thank you for the the opportunity to come on and talk with you from time to time, and. And even though, and congratulate you and, and extend best wishes on your retirement. Furthermore, uh, even though you may not have a scheduled air shift, I think you're going to find, as I have found, when I've got something up my can, the place I call is, is 312-332-3776. And I fully believe that something crazy is going to get something up your can, even when in retirement, and you'll be calling to kind of get rid of it as well as you have all these years. So I look forward to that. And again, best wishes and uh, it's well-earned and I hope you enjoy it. Bob, I, I got to tell you, every time I see Bob from Rosemont's on, I know that I'm going to learn something. Absolutely. Or you're going to bring up a point that I may not have thought about, or even if I did, that I may not have gotten to yet. So I really have always enjoyed your calls here talking Don't White Sox, number, talking right? baseball. Yeah. yeah. Brian, Brian's still going to be here. Xander's going to be here. Jesse will be here. God willing, the yeah. creek don't rise. <laughs> exactly. There'll be a lot of guys still here. But I've, yeah. I've loved your calls for the years. Thank you very much. And I'm sure I'll have things up my can about midnight tomorrow, and I'll be calling during the week. So listen in. <laughs> well, we, we definitely will, Bob. 14 straight hours. Thanks, Bob. 14 straight hours of live broadcasting on Monday, starting with Cap and Jay Hood at 5 on Monday. As, uh, will they announce Sean, Sean Payton on Monday, or will they give it a little break? I'd they'll probably give it a little bit of a break. Yeah, yeah I, don't think they'll, I don't think they'll make an announcement anytime soon. The Bears like to drag things out. 
as we've all come to know. Uh, let's go to St. Louis and Tom. You're on ESPN 1000. Hey, Tom. Hey, thanks for taking my call. I'm a little bit laid up here with I don't know what version of the flu. Uh, I haven't gotten my test back yet. But anyway, uh, I teach at a private school in St. Louis. And, Fred, I have to award you with being – uh, the feeder of my first real addiction, which was sports phone as a seventh grader back in uh, northwest uh, Chicago. You weren't uh, gambling back then, were you? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was there. I, I had the number two. You had, the, you had those, you had those parlay cards. You got to yeah, check them exactly out. Exactly right. It was right. a real yeah. addiction. It was real. Uh, so uh, let's see. I'd like to invite you. Okay. I'm going to try and keep this short, but. Uh, last year, with all the hybrid mess, as a teacher, I have a good buddy who is a Saints fan who teaches math there. We started a, uh, a sports cast uh, by Zoom with eighth graders, and these kids became better and better as the year went on. Sure. Because there was nothing else to do while they were stuck in a classroom uh, for a half an hour before school started, so it was kind of a captive audience. <laughs> anyway, uh, one of the kids was... Uh, Landon Pace, and I asked him his first day in school, I said, do you know Orlando Pace? And he's like, well, that's my dad. I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, anyway, he was a big contributor um, to our sports cast. Uh, unfortunately, he was a Rams fan. But uh, the point is uh, we would love for you to come uh, on our sports cast uh, in our private school in St. Louis to talk about the origins of sports phone because I think it was such a unique experience that kids nowadays would have no idea of how sure. crazy that was. Sure, no, there's no, uh, that's that's a pleasure. I'd love to, I'd love to do that. Absolutely love to. You know what? I'll put you on hold and uh, they'll give you uh, my email and all that stuff and uh, just get get to me. Just remind me who you are on the email and uh, no, I'd love it. I'm going to have a lot of time, Jim or uh, uh, Tom. So I'll have a lot of time. Will you, will you bring a rotary phone into the class? Uh, <laughs> So they even know what that oh, looks yeah. like. Yeah. No, bring that, bring that push button phone if you got it. One of the yeah. princess phones. Yeah, Everyone's right. got one of those somewhere. Yeah. So, Tom, I appreciate it. I look forward to it. It'll be a lot of fun. Oh, that would be so awesome. Thanks a lot, Fred, and congratulations. Thanks, Tom. Right. Appreciate it. Did you have to what take a hold? pocket full of change to to use the payphone in the press box? How how'd that work? Did you, did you? No, um, I don't know how we did that. Uh, I think that I think we actually had phones put in. No, we had phones put in in each of the press boxes, which was major the major pain in the tail for the guy that covered the first game every year. You know, was the phone so no nope. phone's not hooked yeah. up yet, and yeah. we didn't have cell phones. You know, like the one time the Sun Times gave us uh, uh, phone cards to yeah. use on the road. They didn't consider that we actually go to Canada when we cover hockey, yeah, and it, it didn't work. <laughs> There's, we could tell stories about covering games and all that kind of stuff forever and ever. I oh. mean, those are some of the better stories, some of the crazier stories. You know, we're really happy with them when they were happening, but when it was over, it's just chalk it up as another experience. I, I had in L.A. come down. I was, you know, had to get to the game. The, you only could use valet service at this hotel. It was a Marriott, right? Okay. It, it was in Los Angeles, um, and it was right by the Fox Studios, right? I could yeah. have seen yeah. the fake snow. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you actually looked into the Fox Studios. So I come down and get my car. They'd given it to somebody else. Because you sure you don't play for the Blackhawks? Because their car looked just like uh -huh. the car I had. It was, yeah. it was a rental car, right? Yeah. And they they actually said to me, well, why don't you just take theirs? I'm like, what? <laughs> That's not how it so, works. Yeah, so someone's <laughs> out with the car that I signed for. It could be drinking on it's Saturday night, right? Yeah. Yeah. And they could wrap it around a tree, and Hertz is going to come looking for me, not for the guy. And they just couldn't understand the logic of, no, I'm not taking their car. I right. think I need to report it as stolen. And the, the manager of the hotel is like, let me buy a drink. I'm like, I need to go to a game. <laughs> I, see, this is my point. Drinking Saturday night, right. I got to go. And, and they just, I'm like, you know what? And then they're like, don't, don't report it stolen. We don't need the police here. I'm like, okay, well, guess what? I'm going to the airport tomorrow morning. You're paying for the taxi, and then you know you figure it out with Hertz. Right. But th th just the obscene, absurd oh, yeah. stories that you know. How does that even happen? I, yeah, right? Well, you heard. You know, didn't two Blackhawks have their cars taken the yeah. other day? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's well, nice. Just take their car. I, I was down here for you know the short-lived Webio uh, with mm -hmm. North and what, and we came down here for a uh, for the opening day party, and uh, two weeks later, I got a ticket for parking illegally when I had valeted. And you tipped the guy, too. 
for the courtesy yeah. of getting a parking ticket. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, but they took care of it. So it was, I won't say which which restaurant it was at downtown. Right. Callers, hang in there. We're going to talk some bulls. We'll continue our Bears conversation here until 1 o'clock. Hanley and Hubner on ESPN 1000. Extending an invitation mm-hmm. to a gathering that you'd love for him and his, his lovely wife to attend, and you get zero response for him. Well, maybe, like maybe he changed his phone number. He didn't, probably. Oh, he didn't? Are you kidding me? He just blocked Waddle. Yeah. I mean, you afraid you going to change his Let phone number? Let me text number? Fred and see if I get a response. Say, great, great tweet, and see if he responds. Truth be told, I, I you can't text on a rotary phone. I don't. Freddie can. <laughs> ESPN 1000, Chicago's home for sports. You can't always see bad weather coming, so it's essential that you're able to see through it when you drive. Michelin wiper blades with advanced technology hug your windshield like a Michelin tire hugs the road, channeling away water, snow, and ice so you can see clearly, drive confidently, and breathe easy. Michelin wiper performance, clearer than ever. Upgrade to Michelin premium wipers today at Walmart, Menards, Fleet Farm, Blaine's, and other fine retailers. Get help managing your money for the life and years ahead. With Fidelity Income Planning, we'll look at what you've saved, what you'll need, and build a straightforward plan to generate income even when you're not working. A plan that gives you the chance to grow your savings and create cash flow that lasts. Plus, you can start, stop, or adjust your plan at any time without the unnecessary fees. Talk to us today so we can help you go from saving to living. Fidelity Brokerage Services, number NYSE, SIPC. Have you been lied to? Lied to by politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine? Hi, this is best-selling author Navy Dowdy from right here in the Chicago area, and I want to give you a free copy of my new book, Crash Proof Wealth. Because according to Time Magazine, Wall Street's retirement plans and 401ks have failed millions of Americans. After seeing the last market crash over 39%, I said enough. I've discovered a way to grow money, potentially double digits, reduce taxes dramatically, and also have my money protected when the next stock market crashes. When the next market crash hits, you lose nothing. Call Navy Dowdy and Associates now to get a free copy of my book and talk to me personally to discover this little-known strategy to get potential double-digit growth during good years and never lose when the next stock market crash hits. And I'll even cover shipping and handling. No credit card required. Call 1-800-392-9595. 1-800-392-9595. Again, 1-800-392-9595. From the First Midwest Bank State Street Studio, this is ESPN 1000. WMVP WSHE HD2 Chicago. A good karma brand's radio station. ESPN 1000. Chicago's home for sports. Follow Chicago's home for sports on Twitter at ESPN 1000. Fred Hubner, my favorite old and crabby guy. Just about two years ago, our former boss stuck a classic rock guy who knew sports together with a sports guy that knew classic rock for some weekend shows here on ESPN 1000. We argued the finer points of your rather fluid position on the relevancy of managers in baseball, celebrated our mutual appreciation for the greatest rock trio out of Canada, Rush, although Triumph is almost a close second, and wallowed together in the misery of being Bears fans. And we survived COVID so far. Happy retirement, pal. Where you're going, you won't need a mic. Just a rocking chair on the front porch to share all your loud opinions with your neighbors, whether they like it or not. See you out there sometime for a craft or two. Oh, Mark Sander. You have yeah. a rocking chair? You know, you know we did? My um, my girlfriend, Linda, for um, Christmas, I had told her that we needed, we're needed. we going to have a deck on the back of the house we're building in Lockport. And I said, you know, we're going to need, like, I said, I'd like to get the, one of those gliders. Because yeah. we, uh, we're up high a little bit looking down onto the backyard. And um, so for Christmas, she bought these two gliders. It's like a wicker thing, a wicker back, and um, nice cushions. And uh, so for, for Christmas, she goes, come on out to the garage. And I knew she had bought me something. I go, what the hell could this be? And it's, it's a rather large package. Yeah, yeah, it was a nice glider. And, uh, yeah, so we'll be sitting out there. And there's a horse farm right behind us. And apparently they do a... Um, uh, they do a lot of Mexican festivals and stuff like that. Neighbors say that the, sometimes the Mexican music gets a little loud. And I said, you know what? That's fine. I'll just pop another beer and sit sit on the porch. Right. You know where it gets loud down in San Antonio? The Riverwalk? Uh-huh. So the first time I covered a Final Four down there, uh, you know, again, in Marriott, because that's where I stayed for three or four years of my life, actual calendar yeah. years, um, overlooking the Riverwalk, well, the mariachi band started like 8 in the morning and go till 2 or 3 hours, in the morning. Right. 
and it's great the first afternoon and sun shining uh-huh. and maybe you have a margarita or whatever. About the third or fourth day there, you're like, you just want to yell, get off my lawn or get yeah. out of my river walk. Well, someone in the neighborhood said, uh, if you just call the police, they know about them and they'll come and tell them to quiet down. I said, that's okay. I said, I'm not going to worry about it. So we'll wait and see how it goes. But we'll be sitting on the back porch in a nice little glider with a probably cooler in between. Yeah. Oh, so, I, I, yeah. I, can, I can see that. It'll yeah. be nice. Not, not a stretch. No, we're going to get into some Bulls conversation. 312-332-3776. I had a great game last night. I watched start to almost finish. I had a podcast to do when I was watching the Bulls pile up 130 points. And uh, this guy may have been there last night. Jason, what's up? Fred, Fred, I heard it was your last show. And I just want to call and say I appreciate the heck out of you. You don't always see eye to eye with me on baseball TV, but I just wanted to say you have been an institution in this city. I always loved walking by you at the other station when I was interning there. And uh, I love that you have your opinions, and sometimes you don't like me. So I appreciate it, dude. I really do. But here's the biggest thing, and I tried to tell people this about a month ago. I said, listen, first of all, it's not that I don't like Jason. We just disagree on certain things. And I go, second of all, The last thing Jason should ever worry about is how I feel about him. I go, Jason's got jobs everywhere. Every time I turn the damn TV on, I know you were working with Andy Garcia and Will Perdue the other day down at the Illinois game and things like that. You're everywhere. And you know what? That's because people love listening to you. So it's just because one guy might not like you, you know. And Jason, I was at a uh, a farewell party for Mike Lederman a couple years ago. And uh, our buddy Steve Stone, who I've known forever, we're talking about you, and he's, he said, here's an example of, of Jason Benetti. He said you were doing college basketball, the tournament, the regionals, whatever. You had a choice between, like, San Diego and going to Idaho or Utah. He said, where do you think, where would you, I said, I'd be in San Diego like three weeks before I have to be there. And he said, Jason, of course, picked Idaho or Utah because he wanted the better assignment, whatever. And it, it you're all about the work and, and the, 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 the games and the matchups and, and so, of course, you took the road less traveled by where the rest of us dopes would have been trying to go to the Gaslight District. So uh, Stoney loves you for, for all the right reasons. And Sox math, one and one, oh, Jason and, oh, and, and, and uh, Fred. You know, listen. Well, I- here's, here's, what I wanna, here's what I want to say, though, Fred. Like, I, I wanted to call because I really do. Like, I think it's very difficult in this world to have an opinion that some people don't agree with. And, like. To, to be critical when you feel like you need to be critical. And I told you this at Sox Fest in person. Yeah. And, like, I really, really, really want you to know that even if you don't like it, I respect people who have opinions that might go against what other people think. So, like, I, we need that in the world. Like, when, I, when, when friends, friends of mine like to send me texts of your subtweets <laughs> and we, like, laugh about them. <laughs> And but seriously, I'm not like this is not disingenuous. I'm not blowing smoke. Like I think it's important that people have contrary opinions and are able to criticize. Like I, and and I agree. Like there have been days where I've not had good games and I've agreed with you. Like I I, I really think it's important. Huh. To have that in the world, and I wanted to call and tell you that on your last day. This sounds like a podcast. Really, you guys, really you have to have it. Jason on for the podcast. Well, I'll, I did. I invite him on anytime. He's what well, he, he works every damn day. I know. I know. Jeez, the, you're, between you and Adam Amin, you've got everything in the world covered. I mean, the Sox pay oh, more than fifteen dollars yeah. an hour, like the Bears are going to pay Olin Krutz. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. I, I had a promo last night during the Bulls game that about the, the after show for the last Bears game, yeah. and Olin's name was on it, and it took, like, every fiber of my being not to mention it. <laughs> no, I was listening. It was great. And you and Stacey, the one thing I always know is that you're always going to be prepared. Absolutely. You're going to throw stuff out at me that I may or may not know, but it's great to hear it. And that's why, you know, even my friends are split down the middle on certain things. And they, you know, some agree with me, some don't. And uh, that's what makes the world go round. And you're right. I am I mean, I, I'll tell this on Sylvia and Waddle all the time, but they used to always love Rob Manfred. And then slowly but surely they said, you know, he's not that great a guy. I said, well, I've never been a Rob Manfred fan. And I said, because anybody that talks about competitive balance, when oh, one league has on. the DH and the other doesn't, and, and should never a, open his mouth. And a third of the league is trying to tank every year. Don't yeah. give me competitive balance. Oh, my God. But, that, J- Jason, I appreciate you calling because I just, I love, you know, busting 
you know, everything. <laughs> and uh, You should. Yeah. That's what makes the world go around. I, I think I just, so. I, I don't want to take too much of your time. I just wanted to say thank you. Seriously, thank you for having contrary opinions because we don't have enough of that in the world. And I know some of them have been directed toward me, and that makes me respect you more. It really does. Jason, I appreciate it very much. Thanks a lot. And if you're ever willing, I'll definitely have you on one of my podcasts on Monday nights. We'll, 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 we'll touch in. base down the road. Yeah. We'll find a time when I'm you're in. not playing. Unfortunately, it may be, it may be in March or April when there's, when you got nothing else to when do. When you're not in San Diego. <laughs> 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 Thanks a lot, Jason. Appreciate it. Jason Benetti, um, and yeah, at least I watched the game last night, and uh, Jason's doing the game because Adam Amin does uh, does football every weekend, yeah. and uh, it's it's funny because these guys have no idea who they're going to be working with one day to the next. When they're on the road, it's Robbie Hummel or it's somebody doing else. Terrific work, and all too, of a sudden, by the way. Casey Johnson yeah. jumps up and has to do a game my old pal, at least for the my first old quarter. Made yeah. on the road, yeah. And that was uh, that was fun to listen to. And like we talked about, and we're going to take some Bulls calls too if you want to jump in because they have been amazing to watch. And uh, I see that Billy Donovan said they need to take more threes. Lonzo Ball must have took that as only threes because he took eleven shots and they were all threes last night. Yeah. So, but it's uh, Kobe again, White four for four from yeah. beyond the arc. Yeah, I O was three for four. So we'll get into some Bulls conversation throughout. We're here till one o'clock. Let's go to Aurora and Jim. You're on ESPN. Do we have 1000. to leave at one? I could do this for two days. Well, we uh, right yeah. into the Bears post game. Yeah, I get yeah. I got Bears post game tomorrow. I got to find something else to do. I was going to go see a Lockport basketball game, but that got postponed because of COVID and everything else. And uh, things are just getting, it's hard to figure it out. I'm behind a couple episodes on uh, Dexter, so maybe I can catch someone, up on that. Someone got murdered. Yeah, that's what I heard. <laughs> or at least is about to. Jim, what's going on? Hey, guys. Uh, one last time, Fred. Congrats again. And uh, you know uh, where you rank, in my opinion, on. Uh, legendary sports uh, Chicago history here. So anyhow, um, I would love nothing more than to um, have Brian uh, fill in here for the rest of the way and pick up all those hours. Cause he's, he's right. He's right behind you guys here uh, being an original um, Dope. sports guy in, here in <laughs> Chicago. So uh, anyhow, uh, Fred, I'm, I'm going to text you immediately when uh, the Bears hired Jim Harbaugh. I, I told you a month oh, ago, yeah. he's the guy. He should be. He's the best fit. Um, I agree with Bear fan Bob. If they don't go that way, it's, it'll probably be Doug Tyler Peterson. But I'll be, I'll be texting you as soon as they hire Jim, Jim Harbaugh. That sounds good, Jim. We appreciate it. We'll stay in touch. How's that going? Thank you. How, how are we doing on the uh, Jim Harbaugh, Sean Payton, Leslie Frazier uh, Twitter poll? Yeah, how's it going now? Sean Payton. I, I've got... I'm guessing. Yeah, Peyton's running away. He's got two thirds of the vote. Harbaugh is losing twenty eight. He was 30, he was thirty five earlier. Oh, was he? Yeah. The, and then uh, Leslie Frazier with six percent of the vote. Huh. See, I just don't think people know Leslie Frazier. He's exactly right. Yeah, yeah it's and not high profile. No, and wouldn't you like? I mean, I guess I'd like to see well, a Leslie Bears... Frazier was the best bear of that group. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Right, and I'd like to see a guy come in and, and solidify the defense. And people are going to say, "Well, just hire an offensive coordinator well, then, and knows what you know, he's doing." Hire John Harbaugh. Yeah. You're going to hire a Har- Harbaugh. Yeah, I know. But a lot of people say that all he does is he's just your guy that organizes everything. Okay, we you know? need that. You yeah. need one of those guys, too. Yeah, I think Matt Nagy would be really good at that if he had a chance. Callers hanging there. We'll get right back to you. We're going to talk some Bulls basketball, too. Another great win. They're ninth in a row last night as they knocked off the Wizards. We'll talk about that. We'll take your calls. Hanley and Hubner on ESPN 1000. Sam, I have this question because uh, I was a skeptic of Fred Hubner before this season. I know a lot of people are Fred still. Fred Hoiberg, you mean. No, Fred Hoiberg. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did I say Hubner? Oh, wow. I'm, yeah. not, I'm never a skeptic of Fred Hubner. <laughs> ESPN 1000, Chicago's home for sports. The Bears season comes to a close Sunday. What happens next will set the course for our beloved team. And for those of us who love talking Bears, it'll be a Bears Bonanza Monday. ESPN 1000 will be live and local from 5 a.m. until the 7 p.m. kickoff of college football's national championship. That's 14 hours for you to speak your mind with us. Bears Bonanza Monday starts Monday at 5 a.m. on ESPN 1000, 100.3 HD2, and the ESPN Chicago. App. Kick off the new year with Xfinity and get fast, reliable internet for $20 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And score 12 times the speed for the same internet price when you add Xfinity Mobile. That's more speed, and you'll save hundreds over AT&T. 
That's incredible speed at an amazing value, so you can keep new resolutions going strong. Plus, ask how to get $300 back and a 5G phone on us during the Xfinity Hello 2022 sales event. Don't wait. Go to Xfinity.com slash sale, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Ends one ten twenty two. Restrictions apply. New Connect Internet, 50 megabits per second customers only. Equipment taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Compares monthly service charge for Xfinity 600 megabits per second to AT&T 500 megabits per second each with one unlimited mobile line for a year as of 10 6 Reduced speeds after 20 gigabytes of mobile usage. Is your bathroom looking old and worn out? Want to update it, but you don't know where to start? Then let BCI Bath & Shower show you how to turn that old bath into an aisle of beauty and functionality. Our residential bathroom solutions provide the best value on the market, and our customer service is second to none. Our cost-effective BCI Bath & Shower family of products has what you need. Remodeling our bathroom was a big decision for us. They didn't make a mess out of our house at all. And at the end of the day, we had a beautiful new bathroom. And it was a great experience the whole way through. We have the best monthly payment programs in the industry with payments as low as $68 per month or no interest, no payments for 18 months. That's right. Get the bathroom of your dreams now and pay for it in 2021. Call 1-800-779-4178 for a free no-obligation price quote. That's 1-800-779-4178. When you want quality bathroom products at a great price, it's got to be BCI Bath & Shower. That's 1-800-779-4178. Are you like me? Do you live for sports, read sports, dream of sports? And you are the perfect candidate for Illinois Media School in Lombard. What's up, it's Jay Hood. Illinois Media School Lumbar can give you all the tools you need to work in sports radio, television, be a podcaster, and much more. What are you waiting for? Hit a home run now by calling Illinois Media School in Lombard, setting up a campus tour. Call 630-916-1700, 630-916-1700, or visit beonair.com. That's beonair.com. Anyone who has ever needed self-storage knows what a hassle it can be. You have to rent or borrow a truck and then find someone to help you move your stuff. And let's face it, moving furniture and heavy items without damaging them isn't easy. Renting the unit is worse. The hidden fees and admin costs are scarier than the dingy facilities you're leaving your stuff in. Why not use Closet Box instead? Closet Box is self-storage without leaving home. They'll pick up your belongings, store them securely, and bring any item back when you need it. The best part? Unlike traditional self-storage, you only pay for what you store. No paying for unused storage space. Closet Box is background check storage movers are licensed, bonded, and insured and will take care of all of the heavy lifting. Closet Box's local storage centers are temperature controlled and monitored 24-7. Closet Box has an A-plus rating from the BBB. Call 877-233-5696 now for the season's best rates. Get $50 off first month storage using code RADIO50. That's 877-233-5696. 877-233-5696. Hi, I'm James Pirelli, founder of Amani Coffee Company. At Amani, our mission is to use coffee to promote peace one community at a time. So when you buy Amani coffee, not only do you get our organic, sustainably farmed coffee direct from our farm in Congo, but you help spread peace because a portion of every purchase supports a local Chicago charity. So this holiday season, Amani wants to share the gift of peace with you. Go to AmaniCoffeeCompany.com, that's A-M-A-N-I, CoffeeCompany.com, and enter code ESPN for buy one, get one free. Start the new year off right with Menards Bag Sale. Pick up a bag in store and get 15% off everything you can fit in the bag now through January 15th. Whether you pack it, load it, stuff it, or stack it. From light bulbs to tools, snacks, and much more. Fit it in the bag and save 15%. So pick up a bag in store and find out how much you fit in the bag now through January 15th. Available in store only at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Follow Chicago's Home for Sports on Facebook at ESPN Chicago. This is ESPN 1000. Hey, Fred Smurf. You know, you were the best partner a guy could ever have. I thank you for the 30 years uh, we were together. Well, we had a few unplanned furloughs, but it was almost 30. Hey, it was great. I watched the Cubs, so you didn't have to. You watched the White Sox, so I didn't have to. It was perfect. You're going to love retirement, Fred. But two years ago, I learned one tip. You'll think that you now have time to do more of those things. Wrong. You won't have the time to do half the things you want to do. Enjoy it. Take two and go to right. Um, Murph and I did uh, 
did evenings, did mornings. Those mixed marriages work out sometimes. Yeah, they Sox do. Sox fan, Cub fan. Well, it helped, too, when the, the Sox were Cubs around the West Coast. And I would tell Murph, Murph would watch the Cubs religiously and keep score and everything, and I would make sure I cut out all the highlights. Thank goodness for videotapes and then DVRs because you're able to keep up on everything. My Mur- Murph's yellow pad. Man, you well, talk about it. Yeah, and, and, and I, yeah, I've gone to it. And it's funny because Murph popularized it, but... Um, I've got we, mine here. We used them as sports phone back yeah. in the day. And that's how we would have all the scores and all the other things back in the 80s and uh, and then in through, in through the 90s. So 312-332-3776. We'll get to some uh, bull stuff from last night. But first, this caller intrigues me. Um, Ronnie, you're on ESPN 1000. What's going on? Not much. Uh, I just was calling in. I wanted to see if I could chat with Fred, and I wanted to understand, you know, why is a guy in Chicago, <laughs> why is a guy in Chicago a fan of the 49ers? And and I'm thinking that maybe he might be a Notre Dame guy that he's re- somehow connected to some guy named Joe Montana. Yeah. Maybe <laughs> he's a guy that's sitting there thinking that, you know what, I like the way that those guys – play football, you know, they they have a nice defense. They're not like the Bears defense, but, you know, they're really tough. And so, you know, tell me, I, I want to know why. Well, you you got it right. This is Ronnie Lott, the uh, Hall of Famer, absolutely wonderful guy. And, um, Ronnie, it, when I was a kid growing up, uh, I did the wrong thing. When I got through high school, I realized I never wanted to take math or science again, and I went to broadcasting school. But while, right before that, I'd watch Notre Dame play. And I watched the Cotton Bowl, and, yeah, Joe did some nice things. And um, then he goes to the 49ers. My dad my dad got divorced. My dad moved out to the Bay Area, and uh, I just became a Niner fan. And uh, I picked the right time. I also tell people I picked the right time to pick the right quarterback. I could have picked Todd Blackledge or something to be a fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, here he could have picked 40 quarterbacks. Right. Yeah. yeah, I could have picked any other <laughs> So yeah, but uh, no, you, yeah, the, you picked the right guy, and yeah. the reason you picked the right guy is that I, I, it's funny because you know I had to play against a guy for for four years, and 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 playing against someone like that, as you well know, yep. you find yourself realizing that man, God, no wonder I hate these guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard beating them, and 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 it's it, it's you know we got fortunate enough to beat them, you know, one time. Yep. But he was obviously you know, and he and he's done you know, uh, and in an amazing job of not only being a great quarterback, but a great citizen to San Francisco. And he's got his, you know, he's got a, uh, his now, his version of, of, of um, his, you know, life of uh, being in the, uh, in, in, in football and it's it, his version of Michael Jordan, yep. you know, last dance. So that's coming out. So yeah, you you picked the right guy. Well, and <laughs> like, right guy. like you were saying, you played him four times, and there was nothing better back in those days than the USC Notre Dame matchups. Every year when Notre Dame's schedule came out, you wanted to see when that was because you know it's not like now where you could find any college game on TV, but you always knew Notre that was Dame a USC game, yeah. that was going to be a national game, and that's what it was fun. And Ronnie, I actually it was tough for me being a Bears fan because I would do Bears pregame shows with Steve McMichael, and he goes every time I mention the Cotton Bowl, he look at me and I say I'm sorry I won't I won't mention I won't mention the cotton ball again um and then one time I have my I have my 49ers head covers on my golf clubs oh Alex Brown goes what the hell is yeah, that you don't do that you yeah, don't bring so, the col- uh, opposing team's colors yeah, to the golf course I had to wa- I had to watch that out too uh, but I can tell you right now I would not want to get him mad I, no. I've known Steve for a long time yep <laughs> I used to laugh because every time we would play him and play against that group, uh, obviously over the years, as you, as we all know, man, one of the great defensive lines, one of the great defenses in the history of the NFL. But Steve was one of those guys that when you looked at him, he kind of gave you a look that you went, you know, he might go a little psycho on me, man. <laughs> he, yeah. can go, he can go a little crazy on you. So yeah. you, have, you have to be very careful when you are around McMichaels. But, man, what a phenomenal football player. Yep. And as you guys know, man, all of those guys that were on that defense were guys that uh, I used to bow to because of, of the fact that the way that not only did they play, but the temperament. And the, and the passion that they have for each other and the passion that they have for, for the game of football. And, 
And I just want to salute you, Fred, for being a person who with wisdom and intelligence. The, well, all of those great things, <laughs> along with the fact that man, there's this, there's a passion. Yeah, the passion of sports that um, that I, I've seen with so many great athletes. You know, Ron Santos. Mm. You know, uh, uh, you know, I'm sitting here thinking of, of 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 the you know great Michael Jordan. The you know, I mean, you can go down the list of great athletes. I'm sitting there thinking of the guy who, I, I mean, I can't, I can't think, of, I can't believe I can't think of his name. Everybody knows, who, everybody knows the, the the great baseball player that played for the um, uh, for the Chicago Cubs. Ernie Ernie and Banks. I'm, only, and I'm like I'm the only one that's you know been hit in the head too many times. <laughs> Ernie Banks. Yeah. So, yeah. So Ernie Banks, and as you well know, guys like that, when you meet them and mm. you're around them and you're around those folks that you've been around over the years and you've had a chance to talk to yep. them, yep. how lucky are you, man? Yep. How lucky are you that you had that, that you that you had the platform? Yep. You had the platform to be able to talk to them and, and get to know them and to get to understand them. And, and again, uh, I love sports. I'm sitting here watching Montana get killed by <laughs> <laughs> by North Dakota State. So, I mean, <laughs> that tells you how much I love sports. And so, man, I just wanted to congratulate you and, and uh, for all of what you've done. And, and your your buddy asked me to give you a call, yep. and so I wanted to call in and, and just share that with you, man. Ronnie, Congratulations. I, I appreciate it. The first Super Bowl I've ever went to, actually the only Super Bowl I ever went to in person, I went to number 19. And, man, oh, man, at Stanford Stadium, and when you guys handled the Dolphins, the Montana and Marino matchup, and I'm leaving Stanford Stadium, and you guys didn't have to worry about it probably because after the champagne and everything else, you probably got a lift home. But I got lost four times because of all those fog. There was fog <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. I missed the turnoff three times to get to my dad's house in San Ramon. You're in the and, Redwood Forest. Oh, my yeah. God. I was lost. I kept calling my dad. He goes, you missed the turn. I missed it three times because of the fog and everything else out there. But I got to see one of the greatest uh, teams play and uh, just wonderful. I really appreciate you jumping on and calling. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, man. And that was a phenomenal Super Bowl yep. to have it in our backyard. So, again, you're bringing up some incredible moments in my life. And uh, like a lot of people would say, hey, man, only you guys know how to describe it. You know what it was like. You, you've you been there. And uh, you get to share that with the fans. So, again, man, thanks for bringing up this story. And, and, and congratulations for all of what you've been able to do. Hey, uh, Ronnie, Fred's recording Montana, North Carolina State, so. <laughs> no, I'm not. That's, I don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. Hey, you know what, hey, Fred? Yeah. You, get, you, you know how, you remember the, 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 um, the A-track where you put it in the A-track and you had to stick it in there and you, you had to record it and yep. you, you would sit there and you would study it? Or in my case, I had Hacksaw Reynolds. Hacksaw Reynolds was right next to me, and he had a, a literally a, an, an eight millimeter projector camera, and he stayed in his locker, and he would watch films in his locker. And so, you know, I've seen all the you know the progression of sure. what we have today, where we can actually see it on our phone, to you know watching it where all of a sudden it was on a eight millimeter. You know, camera, and you're sitting there going, "What is he doing? Why is he watching all this film?" And he's like, "But, but man, I love it, Ronnie. You got to understand how to get the edges of life. You got to <laughs> figure it out." <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Absolutely so, awesome. Yeah, we, we we've come a long ways, man. Yep. Trying to find edges in our life. Yeah. Well, let's just hope. Let's just hope they can take care of the Rams tomorrow and get to the postseason. It'll be fun to watch them try and make it because this year they've been fun watching watching Debo get uh, more carries and watching that defense and you know uh, for a team that like the Niners who's had so many damn injuries to still be there and persevere. It's it's it says something about Shanahan and that team this year. He's wearing his Niners sweatshirt. Yep. He, he left the, the putrid yellow. Yellow uh, Niners jacket at home today, but yeah, he's got all the apparel. Yep.
Hey man, I don't know how you do that in Chicago, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? They, there's there's some respect. They'd much rather me see me in a Niners shirt than a Packers, than a Packers shirt. Sure, yeah. So yeah, that would never happen. Yeah, no. Now I do get that. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> Ronnie, appreciate it very much. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Take care. Thank you. Thanks. The best. Thanks, Ronnie. Lot calling from Northern California, and uh, that was very very cool. And um, I, our guy Randy Merkin. Uh, it's probably got a story about Ronnie in his book. Yeah. So that's probably where it came from. So I got a copy of the book, and that's what, that'll be the first thing I sit and read in retirement, Randy's book, because uh, all the people he's been able to talk to and get Didn't to know Didn't he have Wayne Gretzky? You told the story about calling in to, to – uh, uh, Pat Boyle told the story. Yeah. Because Merck had Wayne Gretzky call in to wish J.D. a happy birthday that's right. because they shared the same birthday. That's right. And Gretzky's like, you want me to do what? Yeah. To who? Yeah, and he did it. And, you know, Merck wasn't taking no for an answer, no, and JD was kind of embarrassed. And then uh, Pat uh, PB said uh, during the call that there was some static or whatever, and JD was looking for an out. <laughs> so, all right, thank, uh, thanks, great one, thanks for making the call. Yeah, usually we get a guy like that on. You're not, you don't want to give him the bums rush. You no. know, no. Um, you want to get to your thing now? Yeah, yeah. Or, uh, yeah and we'll, uh, callers, well, hang in there. We'll get right to yeah, you. We're here till one o'clock. Three one two three three two three seven seven six. It's terrific to, to salute Fred here, and also I want to send out a, a salute to the Sago Biano family down in Bloomington, Illinois. My uh, good buddy Mike Sago Biano. Unfortunately, they're saying goodbye to. Uh, he's saying goodbye to his mom, uh, Barbara, wonderful wife, uh, mother, grandmother. And everyone in Bloomington, Illinois, knows the Sago Bianos. And everyone up here in Chicago, big city that it is, it's a small town. Everyone knows Sago, and they all go by Sago. But my buddy, Mike Sago Biano, is, has been up here forever. So um, big Notre Dame family. You're not going to find a bigger one. Clo- uh, earmuffs, Cubs family. Uh-huh. Huge. And they also, she was a Pearl Harbor survivor. Her, Jeez. Her dad was on a submarine stationed in Pearl Harbor. Okay. On, uh, D- on December 7, 1941. Right. And they survived it. And she is cancer survivor, lived a wonderful life. Um, they start. They they ran the Bloomington Knockers Youth Football Program down in Bloomington. Started back in 1957, and she and her husband Paul have been running this forever. So all these kids, um, you know, sure. went through that football program. So you know, they're they're in lieu of flowers. They were asking for donations. That, but you know, it's it's a heartbreaking day for the Sago Bianos. But they're celebrating the life of a wonderful woman. And I couldn't be there in person today, so I just want to make sure that they knew I was there in spirit. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Very, very nice. Uh, nicely said. Callers hanging there. We'll get right back to you here till 1 o'clock uh, talking some bulls. I swear we'll get to some bulls if you'd like to. 312-332-3776. Hanley and Hubner on ESPN 1000. ESPN 1000. Chicago's home for sports. Widow Jane Whiskey has made their name by making intense, sophisticated whiskeys. Whiskey is complex and full of character as their hometown of New York City. Distilled in Brooklyn, Widow Jane's whiskeys are aged 10 years, and each batch is made five barrels at a time, taking small batch to a new level. They proof down the whiskey with hard, sweet limestone water from the upstate Widow Jane mine. Widow Jane, a complex, award-winning bourbon with a signature intense mouthfeel and long finish. Widow Jane is New York's signature spirit. Please drink Widow Jane responsibly. 45.5% alcohol by volume red hook brooklyn new york city dear winter we're not scared of you because almost nothing can stand in the way of a new 2022 toyota when you say stay home under a blanket the camry all-wheel drive comes out to play the corolla is hotter than ever with tons of tech to keep you plugged into your favorite apps music and more Snowy hills don't stand a chance against the RAV4's available all-wheel drive with multi-terrain select. And with over 200 horses under the hood, the RAV4 weathers the toughest storms. Grab the family, hop in the Highlander, and go build some snowmen. Everyone will be comfy with available heated front seats and cushy seating for up to eight. With 16 models featuring available all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive, Toyota will get you everywhere you need to be this season. See you in the snow. Toyota. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota. Let's go places. There's an injury. Then there's a person who was injured. At Curcio Law, our battle begins with the person. We get to know them. We learn the details of their case. And we are vigilant in our pursuit of justice. Justice for the person whose life has changed. Their struggles become our struggles. Their injury occurred before we knew them, 
but we become invested in who they are now, who they were before the injury, and how we can help them move forward. We are Curcio Law, fighting for you. Curcio-Law.com. Hey, Chicago, it's Sylvie, longtime pizza man, and one of my favorites is Chicago's own Connie's Frozen Pizza. Connie's Frozen Pizza gives you many ways to experience pizzeria quality taste right at your own home. Signature all natural ingredients, famous cornmeal thin crust, buttery handmade deep dish pizza. Mmm. Visit your Jewel Osco, Mariano's, or any other local Chicagoland grocer to taste the tradition today. Connie's Frozen Pizza from Chicago for Chicago. 40 days up to 40 pounds. Say it with me. 40 days up to 40 pounds. With NJ Diet, it only takes 40 days to lose 20 to 40 plus pounds. Since NJ Diet is a contractually guaranteed money back program, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. NJ Diet is 100% tailored to you by using bioenergetically personalized supplements based on your hair, saliva, and blood work. Then, NJ Diet uses DNA testing to create your ideal diet plan and workout regimen to help you keep it off. 40 days up to 40 pounds can be a real thing. Unlike other weight loss systems, NJ Diet is all natural. No shots, no hormones, no prepackaged foods, and no surgery. With offices in Skokie and Oakbrook, or available worldwide with live online video consultations. Start your new journey this new year. Call now, 855-5NJ-DIET, or go to njdiet.com. That's njdiet.com. 40 days up to 40 pounds. 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 40 days. Follow Chicago's home for sports on Instagram at ESPN underscore Chicago. This is ESPN 1000. Freddie, it's your buddies, Waddle and Sylvie. Welcome into Waddle's World. It's We're- that time, yes, when we go to Waddle's World, we've got a boatload of nuttiest stories of the day that we're just going to read you right now. i got poop stories, I've got penis stories, and I've got somebody lit their trailer park uh, home on fire stories for you. <laughs> that is great. We know how much you, he's probably taken his headphones off right now and tuned us probably out. Probably on the set of Grumpy Old Men Part 5, isn't he? He is our favorite <laughs> grumpy old Old bastage that we know. Yes. You know where Freddie stands on yes. each and every topic. He's been a diehard Chicago sports fan. He's been a, a fixture on the scene here uh, in Chicago when it comes to sports talk radio and sports in general. And Freddie's helped me uh, both on the radio and off the radio with our cancer journeys as well. So thank you, Fred. Waddle's absolutely right. You always knew yeah. where Fred Hubner stood, and that's what we love about him. And that's what a great talk show host and someone in this business is all about have an opinion you know it's now this have a take and go no this is Fred Hubner's opinion, and we love him for it, no matter how stupid or nutty they are. He never <laughs> saddled up at the breakfast bar at Waffle House, ever, because that man was never waffling when it came to any sports conversation. Freddie, it's going to be, uh, I'm be sad not seeing him on a daily or weekly or however long his basis it is, but uh, he's earned the right to go do what he wants. While he's not uh, going up to the uh, Waffle House, he is going to the bar to enjoy some craft beers. Yes. So, Freddie, let's raise our glasses. Here's to you and a happy retirement. Amen. See, something you usually don't tell a person um, is when you're doing a show for them and filling in, say if I filled in for for Sylvie or filled in for Waddle and it was time for Waddle's World, usually you don't tell them on the air that you didn't like the segment. I hate, yeah. Uh, I would. Florida or Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Which one? Which one are you re- never, retiring to? Yeah, Florida or Ohio? Yeah, I never ever got that right either. <laughs> but it's just you know, and it's you know, I I was I grew up and just you know, my dad told me don't ever care what everybody else thinks about you, just do what you want to do. God bless. And uh, you, you try. And in this business, sometimes you got to be a little bit nice to people. And uh, my thing was, if I don't like the person, I really don't want to have them on the air. Um, and they, years ago, they always said you hate to meet your heroes because they're either going to let you down. Or, you know, the, the odds are they may let you down, you know. And I, I did a show last week on one of the podcasts, or my, on uh, David Schuster's podcast, and we had a guy on, Eric Clemens, who used to work at Sports Phone with us. He was one of the first guys from the Chicago area who was on doing sports centers on ESPN when ESPN started. And he told me, he goes, I'll always remember a phrase that you told me. I haven't seen Eric or worked with Eric since the mid-'80s. He said, You're, you told me one time that your dad taught you that imagine everyone, and I'm going to clean it up, imagine everyone's a, a bad guy until they prove differently. 
And he goes, I've always remembered that phrase. And he goes, you know what? It works. <laughs> And I isn't just it said, supposed to be the other way it around? Is, it is. And I, my girlfriend says, you're supposed to get think everybody's a good person. Right. I said, but you're going to be disappointed so yeah. often. If you think everybody's a bad guy till they prove otherwise, Ronnie you'll be Lott, happy. Ronnie Lott mentioned Ernie, Bank, Ernie Banks and, and, and Ron Santo. Yeah. And as a Cubs fan... Right. Growing up as a nine-year-old, 69 Cubs were everything, you know, I was all about yeah. this. To meet Ernie Banks and find out he was as nice a guy as you're ever exactly. going to meet. Just like you. Yeah. He, the guy you would hope him to be, he is. To, to be able, when I was covering the Cubs, to have dinner with Ron Santa almost every single night. Amazing. And right? Ronnie, Ronnie a lot talking about their passion. If, if the Cubs teams that I covered had as much anger that, that and disappointment that Ron had after – after a loss. A meaningless game yeah. on a team going nowhere, and he'd be like, have 10 questions, wanting to go in the clubhouse and ask. He's like, you know, what'd they say? I'm like, they're worried that the lasagna was cold, <laughs> and they're upset. They didn't give a damn about the game, Ron. But, yeah. You know, thanks for your passion. Yeah. No, I, I understand. But then you'll meet other guys that were just bad guys. You go, okay, Yeah, you know what? Fine. And you're like, I kind of thought he might be. Yeah. And guess what? Well, and then everybody in town had their opinions on Jay Mariotti. Mm-hmm. Reading him, whatever. I'm, the first time I met him, could not have been a nicer yeah. guy. And no, I he said, was always geez. fine with me. Yeah, yeah but so, you know. he never less, left me a voicemail, though. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go to Bolingbrook. Thanks, guys, for hanging on there. Ron, what's up? Hey, Fred. I've been calling since you've been on the radio, man, and it's been a joy listening to you all these times. Sad that you're going to be leaving, but I'm glad you're still with us, not gone somewhere. You, you're you an amazing person to listen to on the radio. Very clear Always, I, I enjoy listening to you. I can't turn it off when you're on. And I, I've been listening since they had ESPN on the radio. Yep. And I've made my oh, Ron, ESPN gonna... 1000 all the time. Cool. Okay, I that's... appreciate it. And I enjoy whatever you're going to be doing. But I would like to say I am enjoying the Bulls. This is a team, if you don't watch, you're going to miss something exciting. Yep. Last night was an amazing game. I, I finally got to catch one from the beginning to the end. Oh, my God, what a game. That yep. was amazing. They're fun to watch, Ron. And, it's, and, and now we have to wait and see what they're going to do moving forward and fill yeah. in some pieces here to, because this is a contending team. Yes. You might have to make a big move to really cement your, your yeah, place in this I, league. I, but it's, I'm glad I don't have that decision because yeah. who do you get exactly rid of? Exactly right. right. you got to give it again. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Maybe they can do it just the way they are. That would be awesome. Yeah. Ryan, appreciate yep. the call. Watch you get as many as, in as we can. Uh, I know they talked about it a little bit last night, and I know we've talked about it too, but uh, some of the highlights from last night, Lonzo Ball just had a uh, int- very interesting night. Plus, he had a headband and everything on last night. Going up in the middle of the lane to reset the possession. Ball catch and shoot. Oh, it's a big ball. Big ball from the corner. Here's Zach Levine right into Bradley. Oh, that's bully ball right there. It's a man's game. No boys allowed. It's a man's game. And you, you, you look at it, and they there was a scene, I guess, Io was playing, and Bradley Beal told him about a certain thing, a way to get away, around a move and a way to make something happen. Later in the game, Io used it on Bradley Beal, and he said, you're, you're not hey, supposed hey, to use it today. Yeah, hey. He said, what are you doing? He yeah. goes, I'm giving this to you yeah. to use later. Yeah. Put that in the file cabinet. Yeah, not against me. Uh, let's go to our guy, and I'm pretty sure I know who this is. Ron on the south side, what's happening? Absolutely. Look here, real quick. I've been do- talk- doing this for over 30 years. I can say the two people I talked to the most was Fred and Murph. And, and then particularly you, Fred, because you know what? I don't talk. I don't call about the Bears, the Bulls, anything. Our beloved White Sox. Let me just take you back real quick. Back on the morning, you mentioned them when you and Murph was on the morning. Yep. And I kept thinking this caller's name. His name was Corey. And he would call and say, morning, Murph, morning, Fred. Yep. All the time. <laughs> Remember? Yep. All the time. Uh-huh. But I, Fred, just. I, well, you, I mean, it's not, you know, it's not much I can say. I mean, we were able to enjoy, again, our White Sox getting to the championship all those years, calling and saying, well, they need this. They need a pitcher. They need the manager. But because I love the White Sox and I know your passion and we've talked it for so long. And I, I, I just, 
it's not much I can say that just I have enjoyed you. I am so happy for you. And you know what, Fred, I can sit and listen to and you would talk about soccer and anything because I just enjoyed you and just enjoy listening to you. Say the same thing about you, Brian. You know, I've been with you guys for Forever. a very yeah. long time. Yeah. You know, love Murph, love all y'all. So I'm going to go on that. Uh, hey, hey, Fred, I know me and you are contemporary age wise, and I will actually be retiring in J- July also. So there you go. I'm looking forward to that. But again, now, lastly, because I know if the White Sox, we're going to hope, Fred, that they can get back to the World Series, and you should come back on and do some commentary and take calls on. AM one thousand. That's 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 all I ask. I think you should be next to Jason and Stoney up in the booth for a game. Oh yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah, you. But yeah, but but Fred, (laughs) God bless you and enjoy retirement and just always think about me when you're watching your white right, socks. Always. Okay. We always Take do. Take care, guys. I appreciate okay. it, Ron. Yeah, one of the great, Southside great callers. Southside Ron. Yeah. Would, you know, if he called about the Cubs, then you'd have to change the moniker. Yeah, we know he's, that it was an imposter. He would show up at the remotes. We had great conversations. His yeah. passion right there. I mean, just terrific. That The connection you made, Fred, yeah. it's unbelievable. And, and that's what, you know, I always remember those things and all the people. And like I was telling you earlier about Bob from Rosemont, every time I would see that, I'd go, okay, I got to listen because he's going to bring up points yeah. that I haven't thought about or he's going to give me a different spin on something I thought. Callers, hang in there. I promise we'll get right to you. We come back after this on ESPN 1000. I think Bryce Harper is going to get less than Manny did. Ooh, a bat? Sandwich bat? Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. We got a sandwich bat. We're going guaranteed money, right? Not this fictional uh, at bat money no. at uh, 35 years no. old. Yeah, sandwich bat. ESPN 1000, Chicago's home for sports. Have you been lied to? Lied to by politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine? Hi, this is best-selling author Davey Doughty from right here in the Chicago area, and I want to give you a free copy of my new book, Crash Proof Wealth. Because according to Time Magazine, Wall Street's retirement plans and 401ks have failed millions of Americans. After seeing the last market crash over 39%, I said enough. I've discovered a way to grow money potentially double digits, reduce taxes dramatically, and also have my money protected when the next stock market crash hits. When the next market crash hits... You lose nothing. Call Navy Dowdy and Associates now to get a free copy of my book and talk to me personally to discover this little-known strategy to get potential double-digit growth during good years and never lose when the next stock market crash hits. And I'll even cover shipping and handling. No credit card required. Call 1-800-392-9595. 1-800-392-9595. Again, 1-800-392-9595. Joe Buck and John Smoltz welcoming you back to the City Center Convenience Mart. Heather's moment has arrived, and you just hope all that training pays off. Heather lays down her purchase, but Randy rings it up as slowly as he can. Uh Uh-oh. Yep, she's looking at the cigarettes. There's nothing good back there. Heather's arm is in motion, but she just grabs the gum off the counter. That's a slick move. Even Randy tips his cap to Heather. Stand up to cancer and rally wants you to reduce your risk for cancer. Go to takeahealthystand.org. Ad sponsored by Open Jar Concepts. Attention, this is an important message for anyone that has been diagnosed with cancer after being exposed to Roundup or other weed killers. The Internal Agency for Research on Cancer warned that overexposure to Roundup and other weed killers may increase the risk of developing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Monsanto, the manufacturer of Roundup, may have known that Roundup and other weed killers were likely linked to organ damage and cancer. This information was hidden from the public as proprietary trade secret since 1981, and Monsanto may have failed to warn of the potential risk of cancer. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with cancer after being exposed to Roundup or other weed killers, you may be entitled to significant compensation. Call us now at 800-951-8628. Our network of attorneys are ready to fight for you. You'll pay nothing unless there's a recovery in your favor. Call now for a free consultation at 800-951-8628. You must protect your legal rights. Call 800-951-8628. Again, 800-951-8628. Eric was way behind on his taxes. I owe a lot of money to the IRS, almost $15,000. I tried to make payments. The IRS wasn't satisfied with Eric's efforts, so they came after him full force. They're coming to put a lien and a hold on all my income, my home, my car. I was just overwhelmed at what to do. Then Eric called Optima Tax Relief. When Optima Tax got involved, the cars would stop, the threats would stop. It was easy like... uh 
One, two, three. Optima Tax Relief is A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, and their team of expert tax professionals took care of Eric's problem. I owe 15000 and now my debt is clean. I don't owe anything. Take Eric's advice. If you have a tax problem, you need to call Optima Tax now. Call Optima Tax Relief for a free consultation. Call 800-715-5499. 800-715-5499. 800-715-5499. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Hey, Fred, it's Hanley. Just want to add my voice to the chorus and salute you on a wonderful 30-year career. I have no idea where the time went, but I do know this. The last couple of years, sitting next to you, talking sports, having lots of laughs, well, it's simply been among the most enjoyable shows I've ever done. And I know when Fred Huebner makes a decision, he usually doesn't change his mind. But if you do change your mind and want to come back for the occasional show, we'll keep the Saturday and Sunday seats warm for you and the mic hot, and we'll find out what's up Fred's can. I'll go now because I'm sure John from Evanston's on hold, but this isn't goodbye. I'll call you next Friday about midnight and ask you what the uh, West Coast score is on my bet, just like the old sports phone days, and then you'll change your phone number. Take care, my friend. That was very nice, Brian. And, you know, when I got let go by uh, the other station in December, December you 5th, too? 2008. Yeah, December 5th, 2008. I remember it well. Um, they made me come all the way in and told me I was fired. They couldn't have done it the day before, before I left. But anyway, uh, and I was not expecting it. But um, I came in from vacation. Did you really? I mean, it was my first day back, and I know the contract hadn't been done. And, yeah. you know, they were saying, oh, yeah, a guy in Philadelphia who does it. has been busy and blah, blah, blah. And so I go up there, and the dope who did it, he tosses me a, a bottle of water. He's like, hey, you thirsty? I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, I'm yeah. waiting for a low ball offer. And he's like, you know, in like 30 seconds, you know, you had a wonderful time here and see you later. I'm like, did I just get yeah. I fired? Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, that was the first time I'd ever been fired, so I didn't yeah, take no, it all same that well. Thing. It was the only yeah, time I've been yeah. fired, yeah. And, but, uh, you, Brian, you were one of the first person, people that reached out, and uh, so was Bruce Levine. You, you did. Bruce Levine reached out to me right away. He said, I'm going to try to put a good word in for you at ESPN 1000 and things like that. And uh, that was very, very nice. And um, I, the one thing I learned is, you know, just when you're working with these people, if they're nice people, you, you treat them nice, you, be, you know, have lifelong relationships. Sure. And that's what we've done in the past. And, uh you know, I was telling people I the first show I ever did, I worked with Jim Memolo right after. I used to work with Jim all the yeah. time, yeah. And now you and you can't turn on MLB radio uh, during the season without right. hearing him on yeah. the weekends. Yeah. I would listen to it on the way home, and he'd be on all the time. And the, right now, I don't know what they're doing on MLB radio with no I used to do no Saturday hostels. shows with Greeny. Yeah. And, I, you know, and I knew back then. He knew back then he was going to be a TV star. Yeah, but he did. But you yeah. know what? Greeny also one day did three hours on a Saturday saying that, Saying that Cal Ripken's, oh no, that that uh, Joe DiMaggio's two hundred or two thousand. No, it wasn't Cal Ripken. Yeah. That Cal Ripken playing all those games. Oh, that's not such a big deal. It's just going to work. It's just showing up. And he did three hours on that. Yeah. He oh. came in. He wasn't. He goes. You know what? I'm going to take after uh, Cal Ripken. He did three hours. It just took. Of course, he got full phones. Yeah, because Everyone's going to yeah, talk about right. that. Hot take. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt. That's probably where hot takes came from. Yeah. Uh, Robin Sister, you've been hanging out for a while. What's going on? Hey, Fred. Yeah, just uh, first-time caller. Thought it'd be a good time to call. Wish you the best at your retirement. Um, from Cicero, born and raised, my father actually tells me stories about you, the Sujak family, family yes. from West Cicero Baseball. Yep, yep. I know them well. Yeah. yeah. We, had, yeah. we had great times back then. Yep. Yeah, he sends his best to you. Congratulations on in retirement and wish you all the best. That sounds great. Thank you very much, Rob. I appreciate it. I might have uh, passed by your house on my way to Sportsman's because we had uh, a shortcut through Cicero to get to Sportsman's in time for first race. Yeah. And then, you know, when it became of age, we found the 5 o'clock or 24-hour bars in Cicero. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, I lived right off 26th in Austin, and there was a good one school was there. And I tell the story all the time about my dad. My dad would drop me and my mom and my brother off, give us his – give us – his bets, and then he wouldn't pick us up. So we walked from 33rd in Laramie. Did you have money in the pockets from Usually, yeah. Yeah, there was one stretch where he won seven trifectas in a row. Oh, he should have popped for a limo. Yeah, he should have done something. We knew we could have hot dogs at the little truck out right, there. Right, yeah, yeah. We all, my, brothers, my, my brother Timmy and I, we can only eat throughout the whole day if we would gather our change. We want to bet 780, 80 cents in one pocket. Go uh, to the food 
the, yeah, the food fund. But you could only do it if you want if you had change. You weren't going to risk any of your dollars. You could bet on horses. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then and, and then when I went to Sportsman's and uh, I went to collect a bet, and I was eighteen, and the guy says. How old are you? I said, as old as I was when you sold me the ticket. He goes, oh, okay. And punched it up and gave me the winnings. It's like, come on. You know, don't give me this as stuff. As old as I was two years ago and um, two years old, yeah. I'm 16 now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let's go to Villa Park and Luis. Luis, what's happening? Hey, guys. Happy 2022. Um, Fred. Yes. Um, I want to congratulate you for your retirement. And as a fire, big fire fan, I want to say thank you. You um, always... I used to listen to you when you used to do fire games, the Chicago Fire Weekly. Yep. I used to I see you a couple of times on the Pop 97, and I want to say thank you for, you know, talking about our fire, and I want to wish you the best, and God bless you. Well, we got, and listen, a new new coach, and then now they got a defender from Cologne that came in, uh, a veteran guy. announced now that you're on the coaching staff? That's <laughs> no, the, the real the, reason? No. The, the, Frankie Klopas would not have me on the coaching staff. <laughs> I, you, know, um, I know Frank I, very well. Are you, are you going to fire game? Are you still going to go fire games? Or? Uh, I'll pick and choose. I went to a lot of them this year. They weren't as good as they, you know. Yeah. Let them, I'm, I'm going to be make. they got to prove it first. Which game they're going to score. Yeah. That's the one he wants to go to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I went to a couple I went to a couple nil-nil draws. I don't I don't need to do that anymore. Okay. Luis, Thanks I appreciate it. Thanks for the call. Care, hey, by the Bye. way, uh, yep. uh, David Spada had yes. Ronnie Lott call in. I, I assumed it was Merck, the, so the producer I. of uh, producers yeah. who has a phone number for everyone. Your buddy, our buddy, yeah. David Spado, has always been so good to all of us. He's been great. He's advertised on radio for the longest time. and uh, Fenwick guy, you know. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, that's why you Long and him bond, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, that was very, very nice. David Spado doing it. It was very nice that he uh, had him call up. Let's go to Elgin and Cleveland Dennis. What's up, Cleveland Dennis? Yes, Fred. I chased you up and down the dial for years, trying to <clears throat> figure out when you're on. Got you today. And uh, say it isn't so, Fred, but not not really. Uh, congratulations. I saw you at Bannerman's a couple of years back with Mike Davis. You talked to me. Yep. It was fantastic. I listened every morning when Mongo and you were on. And uh, all the best. 2008, when you got let go, I guess that was a bad year for a lot of people. Yep. I appreciate it. I appreciate you very much, Cleveland, Dennis. That's great. Thank you very much. Is that when the economy tanked, too? Uh, 2008, did, did that started at all? Yeah. yeah, there was uh, there was nothing worse. Um, I I left the job one time because the sports phone closed, mm-hmm. and then when I got fired, both times I had taken my wife out to dinner, and um, told her at dinner that I lost my job. Right. And um, so anytime I would ask her out for dinner years later, oh my, she would go, "Did you lose what your happened? job again?" Yeah. I said, "No, yeah. I won't do that again to you. I've done it a couple times. I, I won't. I won't do it again." Uh, but, uh, no, that was very, very nice. And it, it, like I said, um, there was a, the guys here at ESPN, um, I don't want to say they took a chance on me. They allowed me to come in here and work with everybody and do what I had done before. I did updates and hosted with people and all the other stuff. And that was great. That was wonderful. And I've loved every minute of it. And, uh, you know, I, people say you're going to miss it. Eh, I've done it for a long time. I mean, there may be a day or two where I'll wake up and I got something to say, but that's going to be on Twitter or Facebook or something like that. And uh, I won't. I told uh, I told Carmen the other day, Carmen Yurko, I won't miss watching stuff that I don't want to watch because you know, like on New Year's Eve, I yeah, said, you're well, obligated to. Yeah, I said like watch two college know football yeah. playoff games that both sucked. Yeah, uh, you're, you're you kidding, know, yeah. and and then I don't necessarily have to watch Monday night either. So, which is great. So, uh, but yeah, this has all been great. And I love dealing with callers. Uh, every station has had stretches where we're more, ga- we're more um, guest oriented than caller. We're more caller oriented than guests. And uh, I loved it since I came here that this station, especially on the weekends, we're more into getting callers on it. Absolutely. Talking about talking to the people. And that's what I've always loved because, you know, agree or disagree, it's always great listening to people. And I always thought that when you got, when you called, told someone to call you, you try to get to everybody, and you be nice to them, treat them with respect, because you asked them to call. And I didn't agree with all their opinions, but I would tell them in a nice way, you know. I that's hear what, what you're you saying, yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, you can't. So, um, you know, I thought that kind of paid off. That was nice. And uh, everybody that's uh, called in and jumped on has been wonderful. And, uh, yeah, it's been, it's very special. And, Fred, so. I do want to say, too, okay, for, for my piece here, you were one of the first people here to really welcome me in, and I remember I was working your show with Murph 
this was like probably one of my first few weeks here. Yeah. I hit a wrong button. All right. So there, there's sirens going off somewhere. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, no, this might be the end for me here. Uh-huh. And Murph wasn't all too pleased with it, but you were the one that was there to have my back, calm him down. And, and that's just who you are. You, you were always a welcoming person. I remember at the Christmas party, too, I, I'm there by myself. And you said, hey, why don't you come sit with me? Yeah. Um, and that's just who you are. And we're really going to miss you here on the station. Thanks. I Amen. appreciate it. And the one thing I learned, because, guys, I used to work with a sports phone. I was not always. They got together, like I said, on a podcast a couple weeks ago or two weeks ago. Well, last Monday, I guess it was, or last Sunday night. And they said the one thing we always knew about Fred, is we didn't have to worry about what kind of mood he was going to be. And he was always going to be grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you know, I, I was originally when I worked with a lot of people and I realized it was probably an easier way to get to people. And then as it, the younger people came up, the more, you know, I would always tell people, listen, if you make a mistake, that's fine. Everyone's going to make mistakes. Just don't let it happen a second time. Yeah. And because and, and, learn from it. Yeah. And then, you, you know, you got to be nice to people. And, if, you know, you can get more from people by being nice to them. And I learned that. It doesn't cost you anything. No, it doesn't. And uh, my buddies right now are probably just shaking their head going, really? Yeah, okay. You've never been nice. Yeah. Yeah. When uh, are you going to start? Monday? Yeah. Well, like I said, my nieces and nephews, I I tell them that I'm watching two uh, two grandkids now, two years old and six uh, six months old. And they go, what are their parents letting? Why are they letting you watch kids? (laughs) And listen, I'm different. I'm older. I'm, I'm a little less grumpy. Uh, and I, but I can still get there when I see something that ticks me off. Like when I'm watching the news and uh, every time they, they throw it to someone, they'll say, let's go out to Tyler Aki for, uh, on the scene. And Tyler will say, well, Fred. And then when he's done, he'll say, back to you, Fred. And they'll say, well, thank you, Tyler. Shut up. I, I, just, that, get, yeah. just get to the next damn well, no, story. Thank you. You, you, you're, you're getting paid to be out exactly. there. Exactly. Thank you. Like you, uh, yeah. you got out of bed and did somebody a favor today? No. Yeah, we appreciate and my, my girlfriend says, just let it go. I said, I no, can't. No. Somebody told someone Some, yeah, that yeah. and one of the stations, I can't, or we, our station, but somebody played, it might have been Black and Abdallah, they played the John Drummond when he stood outside Soldier, Soldier Field. Field. One of the classics. And, and I'm saying, from that time on, you should not have had people out there because you knew the fans were going to get more unruly. But nobody. <laughs> Bulldog wasn't having any of it. They keep doing it. It's just like, okay. But that's, you know, that's I'll, I'll complain about that somewhere else and on my podcast. And like I said, if you follow me on Facebook or Twitter, you can find it. Or look under 1252 on um, uh, Twitch or Face or YouTube, and uh, you'll find it there because I've been doing it with uh, my guy, Fat Mike. He's been a great guy to, to run into and meet, and uh, he wanted me to do a podcast. I said, as long as I can talk sports and beer. We're in. Hey, we got a Ford pack of yep. Huebner beer that you brought in yep. that's got our names on it, Tyler, Jake, and you. Yep. And one more time, I salute you, my man. It's Thank been you. wonderful. You'll be here tomorrow after the Bears game. Yes, which and will be fun. I'm I'm kind of hoping, for my sake, that they do do something right after the it'd game. It would be unbear-like. It, it, yes, it, it would be unbear-like. Thanks, everybody, for calling. Thanks for da- to David Spader for setting up Ronnie Lott. That was great. Jason Benetti was awesome having him call. And I will get him on my podcast when I find some time. And uh, that would be wonderful, too. Um, I can't wait for, for him to start calling White Sox baseball again. And remember, you can always hear White Sox baseball here on ESPN 1000, at least um, – whenever they start playing again. So thanks a lot. I'll be here tomorrow night or tomorrow after the game for Bears conversation. Um,